But today the plan is I'm going to make some homemade gnocchi with some tomato and mozzarella. Not, not mozzarella, mascarpone sauce. Hope you're better now. Thank you, James. Yes, I'm feeling better now. Felt a bit rubbish. I don't know what it was, but yeah, I must have slept for most of the last two days. <laughs> so that helped. <laughs> Ethan, how are you today? Yes. Yeah, it was, it must have been needed. Maybe that's all it was I needed. I wasn't actually ill. My body was just like, you need to sleep more. <laughs> How is everyone today? Oh, I did mean to have my oven on. But as per usual, I am not prepared. <laughs> so let's do that quickly now. Because, so basically, normally I think a gnocchi, well, if I had made a gnocchi in the past before, I would have made it by boiling the potatoes and then mashing them up. But I saw somewhere in a recipe recently that said they're actually better to roast the potatoes. Well, like, so they're like baked potatoes. And then, uh, like, scrape out the insides and use that to then mash and make the gnocchi because if you if you boil them then they're all full of the water that you've boiled them in so apparently it's much better if you bake them so I'm gonna try that I don't think it'll take much longer maybe about an extra 15 minutes or something to cook um but yeah I'll give that a go it'll be interesting to see if it works if it makes if it makes that much difference but apparently it's supposed to be a bit fluffier Oh, watermelon and feta salad, that sounds so good. Oh, that's cool. I'm glad you enjoyed it, James. <laughs> and thank you for that wee bit of advertising. <laughs> it's always appreciated. That sounds really nice, though. I don't think I've ever had a watermelon and feta sal salad. salad. I really like both of those things, but I've never actually had them together. I can imagine that'd be really tasty. Hold you, ramen rainbow gnocchi out. Um, <laughs> well, to be fair, I still have food colour. <laughs> I'm not sure. I mean, that may look quite cool. Can I make like pink? I've got beetroot as well. I can make beetroot. That may be a bit much for today. Maybe we'll keep the the rainbowness for the quesadillas. <laughs> was it ques? It was quesadillas, wasn't it? I think it was. I've already ha I've already started thinking about how I'm going to do the quesadillas, hold you, so that will come. We'll send a bit later. Please do, James. I'd like to see that. Sounds delicious. Um. Okay. So I'm just going to get. I don't really know how much potato I'm going to need for this. I'm kind of guessing. I've got three big potatoes. Is that going to be enough? <laughs> Rainbow eyes, is that word? <laughs> From now on. <laughs> oh, well, okay, well, this one is gonna have red, white, and green in. Is that enough? <laughs> Can you imagine if I was only allowed to make rainbow food? That would be interesting. That could be like a neat, that's a very specific niche. I could make that a thing though. Hold on, this camera angle is bugging me because I feel like you can't actually see anything that I'm doing. Let me play about with it. Okay. Is that better? I feel like that's better. Oh, that's a bit better. That'll do. It, that does seem reasonable, Hoji. You don't ask for much. <laughs> But yeah, I'm definitely going to try the rainbow enchilada. Was it enchiladas or quesadillas we said? Quesadillas. Because that's like the layers, isn't it? I have, I've got a few ideas for that already, so that might come quite soon. Okay, um, I have a recipe. Again, I, for my lateness and for my unpreparedness, I blame, um, Proper coffins <laughs> because 
she was on and I got so carried away watching her that I didn't realise the time at all. Right, so I've just put up, these are the recipes that I'm using today. So I'm going to use that, um, I'm going to use those just to go off of just now. Because we can waffle it. Waffle it? What are we, hold on. What? <laughs> Or we can squash this under hydraulic press. Goodness, can we realize this? <laughs> I mean, if you can find someone who's going to do that, hold you, then please look into that and let me know how you get on. <laughs> Girl of X, hello, hello. How are you? I hope you are well. I hope you're having a good Wednesday. It's lovely to see you again. I keep missing your streams. I'm so sorry. And I know that you've been doing a bit earlier. But as I was saying when I came on, I've slept for pretty much the last two days. But I'm back on track. <laughs> so I should be able to catch up a bit now. So I will hopefully see you again soon. <laughs> right, where is this opened? I'm trying want to open it for me because I didn't want to see how much roughly how much potato I need uh, because I've got three big potatoes but then I also have a huge potato but it's I can see even through the dirt that it's green already or not already but it is just still green so how much do we need according to the rest of the But wind down your this up when you read a recipe and you have to scroll through almost your whole life <laughs> to get to the actual recipe. <laughs> it drives me up the wall. Okay. I'm here, I'm here. Don't worry about it, you got to hear. Thank you. And that's what I did and I feel better, so it's all good. Our YouTube channels that do the waffle thing. All right, okay. I am most definitely gonna have to have a nose at that. Nice. Yes, I'm gonna I'm gonna have a nose at that, hold you. And if you think of any more, oh, is it? Hold on, hold on. I'm on the right. I am on the right. Hopefully it's okay. So I'm on the right Wi-Fi this time. I can do some earlier streams next week. Oh, nice. Have you got something sorted for middle week? Well, who bakes? Is it better now, hold you? Because my internet says it's doing okay. But do let me know if it's, if it's rubbish and I'll see if there's something I can do. Uh, yeah, this is, this is gonna be all, all stream today, I think. <laughs> I'm a riot. Okay, four, four large potatoes, but how much is this going to make for four servings? So I'm just going to do three because I don't trust this extra potato because it looks, it look, I don't know if you can see, but it does look green. I don't think you can see that on the camera, but yeah. Yes, girl who bakes, I ask, oh, it's very buffery today, I don't know why. Um, yeah, I asked if you have something prepared for middle week, if you know what you're doing for it yet. Let me just, I'm just closing some things to see if that has any difference. But even I can see it's a bit buffery. I wonder why that happens. Let me just, <laughs> no, that is not simple content for one. <laughs> it would make it look a bit interesting, but I don't think it would taste very nice. I think, is it possible that because I have words open, it seems to be causing all sorts of issues? Just causing it to snap. <laughs> oh, this is like. Super new. Okay, I'm hoping that's better because I have literally nothing else open now. 
and let's even just close that and I'll open up the phone. Right, hopefully we're better now. <laughs> Rainbow rice noodle lasagna. That's very specific. But also could be more specific. <laughs> um, I don't even know where I would start with that one. I'm sorry, I have to check that's rising up the wall. Um, rainbow rice noodle lasagna. So would you want the noodles to be like rainbow coloured? Or would we do rainbow coloured layers in between the pasta? Hello Mary Fisher, how are you today? I hope you're having a good Wednesday. Right, I think we've got our potatoes sorted. I'm on top of the potato situation. So I'm gonna give these a quick clean. <gasps> a ramen bowl cake. Oh my God, that sounds amazing. So how is that gonna, is it gonna, are you gonna like decorate it as ramen? Oh, I'm so excited. That sounds so good. What day are you on, Girl Who Bakes? I can definitely watch you. So if anyone doesn't know, Noodle Week is being arranged by Minnesota Toz, who's another food streamer. Um, we did Curry Week last, last week, last month, um, and I made my katsu curry, which was really good. But yeah, so basically Noodle Week is where a load of food streamers are all kind of getting together, we're all cooking something to do with noodles um, and it's just going to be a full week of lots of different noodle streams. So I'm going to be making, a, it, I wouldn't say it's a traditional Scottish dish, <laughs> but I don't know of anywhere else that it's a thing and it is definitely very much a thing here. So it's basically a macaroni cheese pie and if I can get a picture of that so I can show you just while I'm here. I'm worried I'm going to break my stream again. Macaroni cheese pie. Um, so yeah, it'll be really cool because some people are doing like Asian inspired things. There's obviously cakes and cookies and stuff. And then there's me with my macaroni pie. <laughs> Can you see that? So that's what it's going to look like. A yeah, good thing. Good, I'm glad to see that. Rice noodle lasagna, I know it's gluten free. <laughs> Although, to be fair, hold you, um, you can get gluten free lasagna, which is much nicer. I think rice noodle lasagna might be a bit weird. I've never tried it, but let me touch it's actually cake. Oh, hold on, oh, hold on, hold on. <laughs> cake will be the bowl and the top is really fondant and such. Oh my god, that sounds incredible. I'm so, oh, I'm so excited to see that. <laughs> oh, mac and cheese. Sorry to then, me too though. <laughs> yeah, so it's like a, it's a fairly, it's a fairly common thing that you can buy here at the bakers. And it's literally just, so it's a hot, a hot water pie shell, apparently, um, filled with macaroni cheese and topped with a cheese crust. So obviously it's all going to be gluten free. I've still to decide. I don't think I physically can because I, I don't have like a, a macaroni maker. Otherwise I would make mom pasta as well. Unless I can get one before Wednesday. Yeah, leave that with me. <laughs> but I'm definitely going to make the pie shell myself. I've never made that kind of pie pastry before. And that'll be gluten free. And then we'll fill it with either homemade or like bought pasta but homemade sauce. So that should be good fun. I just give these a scrub, they're covered in dirt. And then I'm just gonna pop them in the oven and bake them for, I think they reckon about an hour. So let me get this done first so that I can leave these to do what they're doing and then I can find something to do for an hour. I need to not dry these, does it matter? I think they said to leave them on dry.
Yeah, garlic bakes. I don't think it's a very common thing anywhere out west Scotland. <laughs> so that's why I thought it would be interesting because it's it's probably not really something that many other people have come across before. Let's stab the potatoes a few times. And apparently I want to put these in dry. I'm sure that's what she said in the recipe. So they're going in dry for about an hour. I put it on for an hour and I'll keep my keep an eye on it. Baby his mom is <laughs> Baby whose mom who bakes. Obviously, okay, when it's not <laughs> Yeah. And that's it. I think it's quite exciting to see some different things because I think there'll be quite a lot of different, like, savoury noodle dishes. So it'll be quite cool to see something a bit different. Plus, it's always that, like, when you cut into a cake and it's something that you're not expecting, it's always so exciting. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> so we run at the same time. Oh, that's sad. I really wanted to come and watch yours. <laughs> Well, hopefully then I'll be finished um, before you and then I can come and watch him. <laughs> Kiddo gets a bit spoiled. Yeah, it sounds like it. That's amazing though. What? Oh my God. Okay, hold your effort. You've just taken another level to the mac and cheese pie. Does it look the same as the one I showed you in the picture? <gasps> that sounds incredible. Why would you not put pulled pork on it? Some in a steamer can eat so nice to their kids. <laughs> Probably to be younger. Aww, well, that's nice to see that he turns. And you've grown up well, so all's good. <laughs> I'm quite happy with that. Aww, thank you very much, Flex Gunships, for your follow. It's lovely to have you here. Hope you're well. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's really cool, girl who bakes. I like, I really like that idea. What kind of cake is it going to be like? What flavour? Graham, a.k. Tabatai cooking. Oh, whoa. There's a soba knife. Ooh. Is it like Casey's raid sword? <laughs> that would be amazing if we started making noodles with a sword. I need to Google that. You prefer gluten free or you also see like I flex and chips I am gluten intolerant and I suffer with IBS so I've got a few different intolerances gluten is the main one um, I'm not a celiac but it does run in the family and I've been gluten free now for four and a half years are you gluten free are you celiac if you are, do you enjoy cooking? Are there any things that you have maybe not been able to have since being a celiac and that you could give me some ideas for things to make? <laughs> I don't remember the picture anymore. Hold you. Hold you. <laughs> are you okay today? <laughs> right, hold on here. Like, I'll show you again. Are you, are you ready? Hold you. Are you watching? Are you watching? That's the macaroni pie. So that's what it looks like. And that's the same pie base that a uh, scotch pie is in, which is apparently this hot water pie, which I've never tried before. And obviously I'll be making it gluten-free, so that should be interesting. <laughs> Has it been long, long enough for you? Are you, are you there, over there? <laughs> yeah, so that's what it looks like. Is that what it looked like when you saw it? And then just with pulled pork on the top. Yes, I fully agree with that girl who bakes. Yes, who's going to prep? Oh, that's good. Right, keto, I I get a bit confused with the keto diet. What is that again? I remember I had a friend that was on it for a while, but he was really, really picky anyway. So there were so few things that he ate, so it it was such a strange diet for him because it, it meant that he could hardly eat anything at all. Um, so apart from that, I don't really remember. 
what you're what you are and aren't allowed is it is it a good ah okay low carbs nice so i guess this is probably quite well it's keto but not overly low carb but it should be tasty <laughs> she's left handed oh so he ordered his, a special soba noodle knife from Japan. God, that cost a fortune. Soba knives. I did not know that was a thing. I'm definitely going to have to have a look at that. Apparently it's way too small. I'll make it a little bit bigger. But it's supposed to be like the kind of pie that you can take around with you. So if you're going for like a... I was going to say if you're going for like a hike, a hike or a trek or something. But that's probably not the kind of nourishment you, <laughs> you want if you're out exercising <laughs> but it's meant to be I think a scotch pie was meant to be something that you could just like take around with you and eat on the go kind of thing because it's not well a scotch pie is not getting any gravy or anything in it it's just it's quite dry I would normally have it with baked beans that's good past enterprise cost is all the carbs yes <laughs> but that pie yeah Low carbs, yeah. That must be quite tricky then because I love carbs. Even being gluten free, I love even gluten free carbs. I love <laughs> like all the carbs. Seemingly almost impossible. Oh dear. Well, we're gonna give it a go. <laughs> I wish you hadn't said that, Dina doll. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, we'll give it a go. It could be interesting. I wondered if it might work okay because of the hot water. I don't know. I'm going to play about with it a little bit. I've got a week. So I'll probably, I'll maybe try, try it at the weekend. Um, see if I can get anything close to what I want to get. I'm not, I'm not overly hopeful now. <laughs> At least if the pie case doesn't work, then I'll just make some really nice mac and cheese and then maybe get some pulled pork and put that on the top. <laughs> Add some garlic bread on the side, exactly. That would sort you out, that's all your carbs. I might remove the mascarpone for myself and replace it with a lower carb cheese. Yeah, you could do that. What else could you put in? Is ricotta lower? Or... You could, you could maybe use, you could probably use like a cottage cheese. Because I think that's quite low carb, isn't it? That makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense, Saturn. Would you think that is quite creepy? Those little four pictures. Can you You just have to carry them about like that. <laughs> That's also good. <laughs> yeah. You do like your food large in North America, don't you, Hoji? I'm not, not that I'm upset with that. I like large food too. Good morning, Sarah. <laughs> no worries. Is this keto for myself? We should do that. Ah, okay. So do you find it's working flex gun chips then? Do you find it's helping sort of weather weight and do you feel better on it as well? Because I have heard of people that do, that do um, like fasting and it does make them feel a lot better in general, like not just from like a weight perspective but it just it seems to kind of work all round almost good either way <laughs> yeah I hope so <laughs> I'm slightly concerned but Betty hello happy Wednesday how are you today I hope you're good I hope you're having a good day forgot you'd pass what flavor cake so did so did I to be fair oh green tea nice I've never had a green tea cake I wonder if I could eat green tea because I'm not, I can't drink it because of the caffeine because it's too highly caffeinated but I wonder if I could eat it. Would that make any difference? <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> I suppose I could make a decaf green tea cake. Good morning Sarah. <laughs> How are you today? Are you, are you on the mend? Are you, are you doing well? Oh a giant mochi, yes please. But if you do, can you please make sure that you make enough for all of us? <laughs> 40 kilos, nice! That's good that it's working then. And it's good that you're able to stick to it and you're enjoying it, because that makes a big difference. 
and hopefully you're not having to like sacrifice too many foods that you like. Hydrate. Thank you, Dinodol. <laughs> I need this today. Still recovering, so yes, hydration is always good. Yeah, no, I, I couldn't commit to keto either. I love carbs too much. It would be far too difficult. <laughs> I don't do caffeine. Well, I don't, right, I don't really understand. So it's another IBS thing. Caffeine's quite a common one for people with IBS that it upsets their tummy. Um, so I can do caffeine in fizzy drinks. But I can't do caffeine into your coffee. I'm not sure if it's a different kind of caffeine or if it's a different strength, but if I drink decaf tea, I don't really drink coffee either way to be honest, but I drink decaf tea and then I can have like a can of coke or something. Um, I don't really understand how that works, <laughs> but with my base it's very, been, very much so being a case of sort of trial and error that I'll try something and if it doesn't make me feel unwell then I'll I'll keep it in my diet and if something else does make me feel unwell I'll just stop, I'll stop having it. But I couldn't live without a morning cup of tea so I just get the decaf and I think it tastes exactly the same. It doesn't bother me at all. Just dedicate yourself, that's it. You need a lot of dedication I feel. Yes, share the love and share the mochi. <laughs> Doing well, so it's so, aww. Oh, well, that's good. I'm glad you're feeling better and hopefully it'll just continue to get better and you'll be back to normal very soon. Not for me, I know. <laughs> that's it. Not all diets are for everybody. It's very much a personal thing. So you just, you do you. That's a thermal mix. It is. Well spotted. It's hiding there in a wee corner. Yeah, they are. That's why I say they're an investment. <laughs> Um, but yeah, they are really, really good. And I find that I justify it by saying that I order less takeaways because it's so easy and quick to make a meal in it that I don't really have the, any the excuse to order takeaways. So I save the money in the takeaways. And I do save a bit of money with the stuff I cook in that. So that like evens out eventually. <laughs> Working at Starbucks during nursing school and thinking about doing a whole true story. <laughs> that sounds like a good story, whole true. See, I've never been that, um, I've never been that into Starbucks, probably because I don't drink coffee. So it doesn't really, it doesn't overly appeal to me. Like if I went to Starbucks, I'd probably get a hot chocolate. I am one of those people. <laughs> really hard to understand yeah and that's the problem especially I don't know is it IBS eaten with you or is it just just a, a sensitive tummy but yeah I find that that's because they say that IBS is different for an, every individual person because stuff will affect you differently and different foods will affect you differently and different amounts of food and different combinations of food that it's very much a trial and error thing for each individual person because they can't say like don't eat that don't have that because it could be something a little different for you but they just say like the main ones are a lot of the time are sort of like alcohol caffeine sweeteners is quite a big one and then there's obviously like gluten dairy and it's just you just have to kind of almost deal with it and see if it makes you unwell and if it does then don't eat that anymore <laughs> Yeah, it's so frustrating. So yeah, a recipe book that you just go on the side. For the Thermomix, it's got a little, re it's got like a, can you see the screen here? <clears throat> it's got like a built-in recipe book. So it's connected to the Wi-Fi. So I can go on that and like search for recipes and then it'll automatically load it to the Thermomix, which is amazing. So handy. <laughs> Aww, oh, that's rubbish eater and I'm sorry. We had nausea. And if you had a look to see, because I think the first thing they say is to do a food diary. So like to properly track absolutely everything. See if there's like a, a pattern to it. Because it could be down to absolutely anything. If it's food based, of course, it might be something else. But normally if they can't figure out what it is, it's probably food based. Manage rooms and social. <laughs> 
go along to let me run. That's handy. I like to work Sunday morning. <laughs> That's ridiculous. So he's getting you in on a Sunday morning so you can just chat about football. I'm sure the customers enjoyed that whole <laughs> You like hot apple drinks? I love hot apple drinks. The caramel apple spice. Ooh. I wonder if they've got them here. They probably do have those in the UK. Because I know that the menus are quite different, I think. Um, but yeah, I'll try that because that sounds amazing. And is that... What is that then? Is it not coffee the pattern is the hard part definitely and that's it like when i did the low fodmap diet sometimes it's the combination of small amounts of like foods that are gonna upset your tummy and although you've had small amounts of them you've had maybe like four different kinds of these foods and small amounts of them so it's all built up and that's what's done it <laughs> but yes yeah, it's, it's a nightmare i fully understand what you're going through Eastern, and i hope i hope you're yeah, that's good that you're understanding it a bit more and managing it because it's not much fun. But what can we do? Um, I suppose I should probably actually cook something. <laughs> okay, the potatoes have been in for 15 minutes. That's good. <laughs> right, and I'm going to do... I put on a... What else did I do? Yeah. That's the wrong one. I think I would know more on commands. Um, so I got a recipe for this one. I'm probably... I'm, I'm probably just going to make it up as I go along. But if you want a recipe, this one does seem quite nice. Oh my god. Okay, that sounds amazing. No, <laughs> yeah, I would definitely be up for trying that. I'll have a look because I think you can see the menu online. Although we are we're pretty much back in lockdown, so I think it'll be a while before I'm actually going to shops or or cafes or anything. Oh. So for to have with gnocchi, I'm gonna do a tomato, mascarpone, and spinach sauce with yeah. So I'm making a gnocchi that I'm gonna do. Well, I like gnocchi, but I find they're much nicer if they're fried. So we're gonna make the potatoes, add some flour and some other bits to them, roll it out. Chop up, the bit, chop up the bits of gnocchi, I'll then um, boil them, cook them through to make them fluffy and then I'll fry them just to get a little bit of a kind of a crunch on the outside and then we'll serve that with the sauce because I find that sometimes a lot of places you'll get it and it's just boiled gnocchi and I find it all a bit, all a bit kind of mushy and, and not as nice as it could be. <laughs> so if I make gnocchi myself I always fry it first. Sounds delicious, doesn't it? It sounds right up my street as well. It sounds ideal, especially in autumn. I feel like that's such an autumny thing. Oh, a fish pie. So did you do? Did you have like different kinds of fish and then put mashed potato on top? Like, I love a good fish pie. It's been such a long time since I've had one though. You just ain't all apple things. <laughs> You're joking. You're weird, Hoji. We wouldn't have known. It is. But I do love a whole apple thing. So does that mean you don't like apple pie? Because that is weird. <laughs> right, so in the sauce, I am going to do just a kind of basic tomato sauce base. And then add the mascarpone and spinach. So we're going to put in some onion, some garlic, some chopped tomatoes, just a tin, some tomato puree. I'll add a little bit of sugar, a little bit of balsamic. Is there anything else? Some herbs. 
Planted it with a nice haddock and hake and some cod. Oh, nice. Nice creamy um, upper layer. Nice. Damn it. Oh, okay. So did you get... So it was just the fish and then sort of a creamy layer on top. That sounds good too, though. And I don't, I don't understand that. I abs I could live off potatoes quite happily. Potatoes for every meal of the day. Because <laughs> you can do so much with them. I don't like hot apple pie. <gasps> hot apple pie is the best, told you. I think that actually, I'm quite sad for you actually. <laughs> Broccoli and cauliflower, oh yes. Oh yeah, no, I could eat that, definitely. Because I am a big fan of broccoli and cauliflower. I shouldn't eat too much of it because it's another one that's a bit dodgy, but it's so good. So yeah, that's that sounds like a really good fish pie. And did you enjoy it? Was that last night you said you had it? And the thing I like about fish, like that kind of thing, if you make like a big pie, is obviously depending on how many people you have to share it with, you normally have leftovers, and I absolutely love leftovers. <laughs> Potatoes! Oh, how is it, girl? Who bake says it? Taters. Them taters. Them taters. <laughs> no, that's excessive. <laughs> that's not what she says. <laughs> take rice over potatoes, would you? Nah. nah. I, I like rice. I think rice mainly um, risotto I love, but just plain rice I think is a bit, a bit boring. I like like paella. Um, rice with a curry is not bad, but again I wouldn't have a huge amount of rice with it dinner tonight. Oh nice. So are you out for work soon then Flex? I'm glad you came to join us for a bit. Sad for me or happy for yourself? Oh that's a good point Hoji. A bit of both. <laughs> a bit of both. Oh, I can make an apple pie actually. <laughs> What's that from? It just sounds very American. Five minutes. So just about when the potatoes will be ready. <laughs> but all of my streams are saved. So um, if you are away, well, you will be away by the time I'm finished. But feel free to come back at some point and watch the rest of it. And as I said, everything I make is gluten free because I eat gluten free. So hopefully there'll be some other things that take your fancy that I'm making and you can come and join us again. Asian is how I grew up. That's fair. Yeah, and then I feel like I kind of grew up with potatoes, so it <laughs> makes sense. Lord of the Rings. <laughs> ah. I have... Have I seen Lord of the Rings? Yeah, I've seen... How many are there? I've definitely seen at least two, three, are there three? They're just so long. <laughs> That's what gets me. Is that called you? Don't watch it work. I just sit down and chill. That sounds like a very good work environment, Flex. So that's good. There's five guys in work, so nothing much to do. Four guys, five. I don't know why I said five. Well, that's good then. So yeah, we'll definitely be on here for a wee while. So let me walk around. Rice is great, but it mutes the flavours a lot. Ooh, that's hot oil. Yeah, I think that's what I, like, if I've got a really spicy curry, because I'm not that great with spice, I like a bit of rice with it because that's it, it kind of calms it down. But I also feel that, why is this so hot? Calm down. Um, that needs more oil. 
But yeah, I think as well, if it is just a hot curry, I'd rather just put some yogurt or something on. That was you. <laughs> it's hard to tell. <laughs> this awesome roasted potatoes method. Eaten. <laughs> right, hang on. Would this have been a better method for me to do today? Because I'm literally roasting potatoes at this very moment. <laughs> but yes, please do. I'd like to see it. We swear by it. Nice. I was going to say, how's the night shift? Told you, but I've forgotten again which one you're on. I hope you can to keep more track of what you're working. <laughs> Not appropriate for today's recipe. Okay. Ah. Oh, like in butter. Yum. I love roast potatoes. Like if you have them with um, a roast dinner. Maybe I can make a roast dinner one day. Because that does take hours. <laughs> That's a good idea. Actually, I should write that down. Thank you for that. Either. <laughs> I agree. Thank you, girl of bakes. <laughs> oh. Water is just wonderful. Okay, so I've got about half a red onion in here and a clove of garlic. And I've just kind of smashed the clove of garlic into two because I'm gonna blitz it because I much prefer a, what's it called? Like a smooth sauce. I'm not really a big fan of chunky sauces. So I'm going to blitz it once it's all cooked. So it doesn't matter if it's kind of big chunks just now. <laughs> right, so girl who bakes, because she, she did the exact same thing when I was watching it, like, was that a week ago or so maybe? And that was trolly. I'm not going to lie, I felt, I did feel bad for you because there is absolutely no way that I would be able to do that. I just have to stop talking. <laughs> that's far too hard. Very trolly. Betty, how long have you been streaming? Um, hold on. <laughs> the calendar. <laughs> so it must just be that what five weeks? Just over a month? Yeah, I think about five weeks. Maybe six. Five to five to six weeks, Betty. How long have you been streaming on Twitch? I think you're quite new as well, aren't you? That's not allowed anymore. <laughs> no, I'm not surprised. Did you write that in the channel points bit? You can ban any word but not um. <laughs> oh, Eternity should. It's a lot of fun. It's really, it's exhausting. <laughs> but it's a lot of fun. Although I need to get like, right, that's what we that's what we can think about now is what I need like a, a what do you call it? A definite, um, all words have escaped me, a definite punishment for if I say a word. I need to come up with one and just stick with it. It's a lot of fun. You should update it. Aww. Thank you, Etern. So are you. I absolutely love watching your cooking. Hold on. Let me see if I can get this to work. Did that work? Did that work? Yay! Look at me go. You would think I was. I know what I was doing here. well <laughs> is 
that other streamer people? Told you, you should stream. Have you ever streamed, actually? Found some crappy jello shots. That's not a punishment. <laughs> yeah, girl of bakes, that sounds like a joy rather than a punishment. <laughs> Yeah, I'd definitely be okay with that. Okay, so the onions are a bit softer. And it smells amazing. Let me put the temperature, the... Bring me up a wee bit. And then I'll add... Not a no, I fully agree with her and that is not a punishment. <laughs> That's what you should get if you manage not to say the word for five minutes. <laughs> I hate shots, I don't like <laughs> my alcohol. Mmm. Chewing your alcohol, Dave Dave. In case he drank one, that made him do a bunch. A bunch of shots. That's look. Fireball shots. I don't know what that is, but it sounds horrific. What's a fireball shot eater in? I'm not surprised. I'd love to see Casey drunk. <laughs> I think that would be hilarious. Dr. Neil Cortex. Hello, how are you today? Happy Wednesday. I am making Joe Notch City. Joe Notch? Joe Notchy. Yes. <laughs> I am making that. Is that a reference that I am not aware of? <laughs> I feel like it. Fireball is a cinnamon sweet whiskey shot. Ooh. I don't like whiskey, but I like cinnamon. I wonder if I'd like that. I'll be starting a new season October for <gasps> Oh, that's cool, Sarah. I like that. Hold on. Let me do this as well. That sounds amazing. Have you got some ideas of what costumes you're going to do yet, Sarah? And is that for the boys or for yourself or for both? <laughs> Very sweet and tasty. You'd like it. But, oh, those are the worst ones. Though, if it's actually tasty, you're like, oh, this is great. I can drink so much of this. <laughs> and then before you know it, you're like Casey and you're drunk. <laughs> I've just added in about a tablespoon. Mm. Yeah, a heaped tablespoon of um, tomato puree. And you want to be cat boy from PG Masks? Nice. That's cool. Well, I definitely want to see that. That sounds really good. Show my mum she sews. <laughs> Crafting and food. I mean, look at us all branching out. I love it. And I love your plan. Oh. I love your planning stream, Sarah. They're so like calming. They're so calming to begin with, and then I think I wish I had my life in order. <laughs> so organised. And then we've got a tin of chopped tomatoes. love the smells of these. I'm gonna add in maybe a half a tin. Half a tin, a quarter of a tin. Half a tin, half a tin of water. Do you say yourself, yourself? <laughs> Is that, did I say it weird? I wouldn't, I would never have thought that was a word that I would say in a particular way. Yourself, 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 yourself. <laughs> but no, every time I say that, I'm gonna be like, how did I say that? It takes so much time to organize things, it really does. And I always, I have great intentions and then it never really happens, but I like to think that that's like a goal of mine. I'd like to be really, organized <laughs> yeah no you needed a week off that's fully understandable yay that's good I'll definitely come and watch you on Sunday then if I'm if I'm about 
excited you to be ghost for Halloween. Yeah, that would be cute if they kind of matched, or if there was like a bit of a theme. I think that would be really nice. Um, okay, I'm just having a look to see what else I want to add to my sauce. So I'm going to add maybe about half a teaspoon. Half a teaspoon of sugar. Just to begin with, I might, I'll see how it goes and I might add a bit more, depending on how it tastes, if it's a bit like tangy from the tomatoes. No worries, Sarah. And then a splash of balsamic. So that was maybe, yeah, again, a, a teaspoon. I've just realised I actually meant to, I meant to do wine, <laughs> that's annoying, oh well. Can't wait to dress up and stream all October. <gasps> Are you going to be dressed up for every stream in October, Fetty? That's such a good idea. I don't know if I have any Halloween costumes at all. <laughs> so that would be a bit of a mission. But I really like that idea. <laughs> have you got, what are you gonna dress up as? Is that a thing? Is that what people do? Sounds like an awesome idea. It does, doesn't it? That is such a good idea. So what, what costumes are we thinking, Fetty? Are you are you organised for it already? I suppose it's not that far away, really. And then I'm putting in some of my mixed herbs. So I'm going to do... Hmm, a teaspoon and a half. And this has salt in it already, so I'm not adding salt separately because it will be very salty. But I'll let this cook off and then it'll reduce a little bit and then we'll blitz it and we'll taste it and we'll see if it's missing anything or if I need to, yeah, add anything. I want to, but I need to make or at least get costume. <laughs> I know the feeling, Fetty. <laughs> I fully understand. <laughs> That's cool. At least I suppose you could do it like a bit at a time. So you could do, you can make sure you've got the first week ready and then in that week, start your next week's. So yeah, I'm sure you manage. I'm really excited to see what you do though. That'll be really fun. Oh, well, I'm glad you found us. <laughs> And to be fair, like I'm fairly new to this and I I didn't really know that there was much of a cooking community on here either, but it's amazing. And I think it's really nice that it is a bit smaller, um, that everybody supports each other, everybody's so nice and it's just a lot of fun. Like it's, it's really a lot of fun. So there are loads and loads of amazing cooking streamers, so please do have a nosy about. You will find some really, really good ones. Up dash five minute costumes. <laughs> I, oh, I might do that, but I could just paint my face and have like a different face paint every day. I feel like I could just about manage that, although it would be rubbish because I'm not creative like that in any way. <laughs> it is, isn't it, Fetty? We do well. <laughs> oh, thank you, Dana Doll. <laughs> I appreciate you looking after me. Oh. I can tell I'm flagging slightly. Yeah, I should. You'll sort it, Betty. That's it. That's such a good idea, though. Oh, so Twitch was for gamers. Yeah, so did I um, until not long before I started streaming. Because it is obviously mainly, like, it's still very much game to what are aimed towards gamers. But there's a lot of amazing cooking streamers there and there is definitely a community now. Secret of Twitch is a small street. Yeah, definitely. 
You should flex. Please do. Because that would be really fun to watch. I love watching cooking streams. I spend most of my time. And if I'm not streaming, I'm watching cooking streams. <laughs> I don't really do much else now. <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> Can you imagine? Can you imagine? I'd love that if I just show up on Halloween under a white bed sheet <laughs> with my eyes peeking out. <laughs> I might do that just for the for the for the giggles. Although I'd have to make something that wasn't like tomato based because that would just make a mess. Love the people that build. Oh, that's cool. I've not really seen a huge amount of like the crafting building stuff. Let me have a look. The fishnet dropping for switch. <gasps> That's clever. That's a really good idea, girl. That. Yeah, I like that a lot. And then just get you could probably just get like blue eyeshadow or something. Oh, all the possibilities. <laughs> I've got so much to think about. I say that, I mean, I'm not even really planned with my menu. I don't, half the time I don't know what I'm cooking. So I can't imagine I'll be on top of that. But, but yes, Fetty, I'm very excited to see what you come up with next month. But I'm not working cook, cooking on Twitch. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> There's, I know that's it. Especially in these times, I feel like it's just such a nice place to be. And I am, I mean, I'm food obsessed. So it makes sense for me to spend pretty much all of my time here. Oh dear, yes we are. What do we think about getting dressed up for, for uh, yeah, I don't think, I don't think ha uh, all of October is doable. What day is Halloween this year? Am I streaming anyway? Oh, it's a Saturday. A wee cheeky extra stream maybe. Yeah, so hold you, I'm gonna come on on Halloween under a white bed sheet with my wee eyes poking out. <laughs> into making cosplay stuff. Oh no! <laughs> so you gave it all away. Have you got anything left that you could use? Maybe you could like scrap together some bits to make something. Easiest costume wear a blue shirt, wrap a cord around you and then pin a chicken. <laughs> oh sure that's that's terrible. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh dear god. I do like it though. Right, if I'm looking for ideas, I'll definitely come to you, Hoju. And then it can be like a... <laughs> and then I could do like, people have to guess what I am. And they could all be food based. <gasps> oh, fun. Dug myself into a hole of Molly stream one day in October. No, you had, no. <laughs> That's not, no. That's not allowed. We're expecting big things from you, Fetty. <laughs> And I'm sure you'll manage. I mean, we've got some great ideas going already. <laughs> Steve John, the most creative costume. Yes, I mean, the, yeah, the, the costume ideas are phenomenal so far. Make Aw, that's rotten sick. And it's, I know exactly how you feel. That is not a nice feeling. And that's it, if you're still feeling rotten, Works the worst place to be if you're if you're needing to visit the 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 restroom often. But I hope it passes soon. I hope it's not a bad a bad bout of gluttoning and you're okay. <laughs> I watch just stereo speakers. So were you just like in a black a big black cardboard box? Surround sound. <laughs> That's really clever. That is really clever. I love the awful Spider Man costumes, also, the ones which are really tight and are just raw. <laughs> <color. laughs> I feel like this could be a lot of fun. See, Fetty, you're just a bit sorted for the month already. You are welcome. <laughs> Yeah, I was wondering what I could do for Halloween. Like, I'm not a huge Halloween person, but I'll at least do some Halloween recipes. 
So after hunting for so long, right, so basically Wor Worcester, I think that's how you say it, Worcester sauce. Done. This here, Worcester sauce. Um, I have, so it's not normally gluten free. It's also not normally vegetarian. It can be one or the other, but it's not normally both. And I found one that is both exactly Worcester, 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 Worcester sauce. <laughs> Worcester, Worcester sauce. Yes. Worcester. I wonder how, because it is Wor Worcester, Worcester, Worcester sauce. It, it's lost all meaning. <laughs> that word has lost all meaning. Anywho. So this is gluten free and vegetarian because normally I think they've got anchovies in and obviously some kind of gluten. So I found one. So I'm going to pop a little dash. It's a lot lighter. Oh, I'll pop a dash in there. So I just wanted to share that with you because I was quite excited that I found it. <laughs> I think it's so scary but yeah. That's it, like, I mean, even I find it, so I'm not celiac, I'm just gluten intolerant, and I find that I had one, I was glutened recently, and it wasn't even what I had had gluten in it. Oh, did it? I think, no, I think it was like, it must have, it must have been traces of gluten, and it, it, that doesn't normally bother me too much. But I was in so much pain, like I literally couldn't stand up straight for most of the day. I spent all day in bed and I just felt absolutely horrific. And that was from almost no gluten at all. And that's not even with celiac. So it's just, and it is, it's a shame because people just don't understand how, how bad it is. And they think, oh, it's, you've got a tummy upset. And you're like, no, that's not, that's not all it is. Hello, Sarah. <laughs> Worcester, sure, yeah. Yep, that's the very one. <laughs> so I was very pleased when I found that. Yeah, so I'll now be putting on everything because I think one thing that I've never actually done with Worcester, sure, sure, sure is I think it's quite common to make like toasted cheese and put some Worcester, sure, sure sauce on the top. And I've never actually done that, but I feel like it would taste really, really good. So now that I have one, that is both gluten free and vegetarian. Although I'm not vegetarian, I do try and make as much of my stuff vegetarian. Um, it's handy to have that it's both. <laughs> oh dear, what have we started? We're sure, 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 sauce, yes. <laughs> I don't think anyone can pronounce it. Even people from Worcester, sure, sure, they probably can't pronounce it either. And I feel like it's one of those things once you start saying it, it gets stuck in your face and you can't get it all out. <laughs> if that makes any sense. It makes sense to me in my head. Okay. What am I doing? Right, how are the potatoes looking? Let's have a wee nosy. Right, so they've been in for 45 minutes. I'm gonna... Ooh. They look like good baked potatoes. And it's funny, I'm lazy when it comes to baked potatoes. I normally do them in the microwave. And they definitely do not, where's my towel? They definitely do not taste the same. So it's quite exciting to see a proper baked potato again. And it's roasting. Good God. I think we're not too far away. I think that the last 10, 15 minutes will probably do them. Oh, they smell nice as well. Worcester. Is that where the hobbits came from? I had no idea. It's worse. <laughs> it sounds like it should be doctor because I don't think anyone else can pronounce that. <laughs> you just make one to two costumes a year because you're like so scanning your costume. Oh, that's cool. So do you keep all the costumes, Sarah, when you're finished then? 
do you have like a, a wardrobe full of really cool costumes? <laughs> it's almost terrible. Yes, it, I think as well because no one knows how to pronounce it. So I think you think, well, if I pronounce it wrong, then no one can judge me because I'm like, well, I know I'm pronouncing it wrong. So. <laughs> Oh, Yoda, that's too cute. Wait, that's not okay. <laughs> I hope your toes are okay, like. Your fam. Oh. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, Sarah, I like that. I always think the costumes are really cute if there's like a kind of a theme to them. A bit like what Hojo said with his surround sound. <laughs> it just adds like a whole other whole other um, element to it. Hobbits came from the Shire. Is it that Shire though? Because there's a lot of Shires. <laughs> is it Worcestershire or is it York? Yorkshire? Lanarkshire? <laughs> and yes, I am Googling it. Hobbits are said to have emerged into the valley of Anduin between Markwood and the Misty Mountains. I don't think that's right. <laughs> yeah, I know too little about hobbits. Not a clue. My closet's costumes. That's cool. I like that. Well, so you're sorted for Halloween then too. <laughs> Mission me marks. Aww. <laughs> by speaking like Yoda already. The only problem with that is Doctor, you might get used to that and then if he learns like commands and stuff then Flex will have to always speak to him like Yoda for him to do anything <laughs> which would be amazing. <laughs> Dress up as a crazy cat lady. <laughs> I am already. Carry Island Murphy throughout the stream. They would hate that. There is absolutely no way um, that I'd be able to. As soon as, because they're, they're proper like scaredy cats, as soon as there's a loud noise, the two of them are like, oh, what's going on, run away. So I wouldn't be able to keep them here at all. And I would end up with scratches everywhere. <laughs> I could have like little fake cats. And then anytime they, they come, like they walk past, eh, I could show you them, would that do? <laughs> with requests and a recipe, what are the limitations? Yeah, just no gluten. So, okay, so no gluten, no chickpeas, because I can't eat chickpeas, so I don't want to make something that I can't eat because that's just a waste. <laughs> so no chickpeas, no gluten, no sweeteners, but that's, that's not very normal anyway for like a recipe. I think that's it. Your accent is bringing, where are you from, Flex? And are you, are you Scottish? Or do you have Scottish family? Are you vegetarian? No. So I'm not, I'm, yeah, I'm not vegetarian, not vegan. I just try and make a lot of the stuff that I do, either vegetarian and or vegan, because I like to be as inclusive as possible. <laughs> so I do eat a lot. I mean, I eat mostly vegetarian. But as you'll probably know, that, um, the, it, it can be quite difficult, especially if you go out to eat, to get something that's both gluten-free and vegetarian. So obviously I stick to the gluten-free part because eating meat's not going to make me unwell. But yeah, I don't say, I'm not any one of those, but I would say during the week, definitely uh, vegetarian. And then if I eat out sometimes, then I'll have a bit of meat or some chicken or something just for ease. Or if I fancy it, like a bit of fish, I'll have a bit of fish. So yeah, no restrictions apart from gluten free, chickpea free, and something that's gonna taste nice. <laughs> Thank you, Hojo. <laughs> Could you tell my brain was starting just to not work there at all? <laughs> Dundee, nice. That's not too far, so I'm just outside Glasgow. Born in Edinburgh. Mm. Very nice. So have you been in Dundee for a while then? Took a boiled awful soup. That sounds disgusting, Doctor. 
I mean, I suppose it's like, I could just boil like a haggis and then open it out into the water, but that sounds horrendous. Have you had a boiled offal soup before, Doctor? Is that why you're suggesting it, or? <laughs> it's very Americanized. Oh, really? Well, where did you get your American accent from then? And then maybe the stream can help bring back your Scottish accent. <laughs> Done for 18 years. Right, hold on. So did you move from Edinburgh to Dundee and you've now got an American accent? How's that happen? <laughs> ah, okay. Like that's not, that's unusual. <laughs> okay, that makes more sense if you went to an American international school. So was that, does that mean there were loads of American people there? And that you kind of picked it up from there. Same here, I mean, eat mostly veggie during the week. It feels great, to be honest. That's good. I am glad. I find, I think vegetarian for me is a bit hit and miss. Because I think with my IBS, hold on, I need another drink. With my IBS, um, a lot of veg I can struggle with. So... Sometimes I do think I should just have like a bit of chicken and some potatoes and that'll help calm my stomach down. But I do like the concept of like the vegetarian bit. And there are so many things you can make that, although I do end up eating quite a lot of carbs. <laughs> I love meat. Yeah, I do quite, I do quite enjoy a different kinds of meat. I don't miss it too much during the week or like when I am eating vegetarian stuff, but every so often I go, oh, I could really go like a steak or a bit of salmon or something. Maybe even more than cheese? No, no, cheese is always number one. <laughs> the ladies in Oz love the American accent. Oh, um, do they really? <laughs> Very nice. I haven't but was looking to see how far you would go. I don't, to be honest, I don't even, I'd have to go to like a butcher to get all the offal. It is gross. It really, that is gross, doctor. I mean, if if you requested it, I'd have to do it because that's what I've done with the channel points, but please don't. <laughs> and I'm not sure that would make particularly interesting viewing because it's just, it's just gonna look horrible. Into oh, it's now <laughs> six ten. That that is tall. Good God, <laughs> a deep ass southern accent. <laughs> That's hilarious. A deep ass southern accent, and you're in Dundee. <laughs> That's very rad. <laughs> six ten. I know. I can't believe that either. I'm five six, and I thought I was quite tall. <laughs> Got a lark. No worries, Fetty. Fetty, thank you very much for your lark. I would say that's quite tall as well. The 610. Do you play? I feel like you need to play like a sport or something if you're 610. Is that not like an, an automatic like basketball or something? Or is that a, is that a stereotype? Okay, I'm gonna look for my mascarpone. Um do I need anything spinach? Yeah, five, I would say five, six is quite tall for women here. <laughs> but then if you're six, ten, like that, <laughs> I'm absolutely tiny. I'm a, I'm a tall Asian, I love that you in. You shrank a bit. Surely you're not old enough to be shrinking already. No, an old man, but I did play rugby through high school and college. That would be quite scary, I feel, playing rugby um, and then having a six foot ten man with a southern accent come running at, running at you. Oh! <laughs> Got a visitor. Isla's come to say hello. <laughs>
fucking your wife or girlfriend must be hilarious. Yeah. Unless your wife or girlfriend is also really tall. I'm older than Alec. Are you? I feel like that's always interesting because like, I'd love to, I feel like we should put that in our bios actually what age we are because I am much younger. No, I am much older than I look. Yeah. So the same as you, Eater, and I was thinking I was the other way around, but no. I am much, much older than I look. Plus the braces at the moment don't help, but I'll hopefully be getting them out at the beginning of next year. <laughs> so I'm hoping that'll make me look slightly more my age again. <laughs> Five, three. Yeah, that sounds about right. That does sound about right, yeah. So yeah, I probably, I'm quite tall for, for a Scot. How are the... I'm gonna give them another five minutes, I think. It's scary for me. Except Pitt well, that's what I mean. Like for them, it must be for you, the other folks playing rugby. That must be scary. Tip hitting the ground. Oh God! Yeah. <laughs> you just need to make sure you don't fall too often. <laughs> I am much older than I look. So you're older than you look. So that's good. But yeah, we're all older than we look. So we must have good genes. <laughs> we all, all here have got very good genes. I'm gonna reveal my first name, maybe my age sometime later. <gasps> later today, like in the stream meeting. I always think it's really funny like to not know people's names or ages or anything about them. Maybe I'll do the same. Although the thing is, if you've seen my Instagram, I think all of my information's on there anyway. <laughs> so it's only it's only hidden on Twitch. What's your favourite Scotch whiskey? Doctor, I don't really like whiskey. Is that bad? I I really struggle. Like, I feel like whiskey is one of these things I I'd really like to be able to drink it because I feel like being Scottish for one, and it it always looks dead like sophisticated if you can just sit and drink like a shot of whiskey. But I just really don't like. <laughs> um. Uh, yeah, there's not even one that I like or uh, that I dislike less than the others. Are you a Scotch whiskey drinker, Doctor? And do you have a favourite? Do you have one that you would recommend that's maybe like a beginner whiskey? <laughs> Hello, Fetty. Nice to have you back. Maybe for a point redemption. Right, how many points are you on? Do I need to add that now then? <laughs> 36, but 106. I don't think you like 106. I doubt that very much. The big old beard. But I think, is that not what happens with a beard? Quite often if you have a beard, it does make you look older. What do I know? Your neighbour makes you want to. <laughs> the thing is, I'm very easy to find. <laughs> but thank you for keeping it to yourself. <laughs> And I'm assuming you mean Insta, because I don't think I'm on Etsy. Am I on Etsy? I don't think I am. <laughs> Absolute unit. Granny struck me one to die. Yeah. <laughs> you just throw the ball at him and run in the opposite direction. With my beard, I look my age without it, I look 12. <laughs> Maybe that's what I need. Maybe I need to grow a beard so I look my age. This. That's quite a popular one, I think, and I think 18 years sounds like a good a good year. That's normally the way I go by, like the the most affordable one. That's the oldest. Come against this big bulky five five. Oh, for goodness! <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. I suppose they can just get get you from your legs, can't they? So yeah, there's probably advantages and disadvantages of being six foot ten. <laughs> risk <laughs> no <laughs> no definitely not that is a brave man oh right Eater and I'm really intrigued now and I don't even I don't even think I can guess your name or your age I find it really hard to tell
I just find it really funny though, like, I recently was ID'd for non-alcoholic wine <laughs> because she hadn't realized that it wasn't alcoholic because it's still, because it's got like a small percentage of alcohol in, when they beep it through the machines, it still shows up as being alcohol. So then she ID'd me and I was like, non-alcoholic plus if you actually knew what age I am, really? <laughs> They have non-alcoholic wine. Yeah, it's it's okay. It's I mean, it's it's nice if you're not able to drink. Like if you were if you're a designated driver or pregnant, I suppose. <laughs> but I've made it before. I used non-alcoholic red wine before to make mulled wine, and it was quite nice because you're adding other stuff to it. It like it doesn't just taste of. The non-alcoholic wine. I can't quite decide if these are done yet. I don't want to cut them open. Um, I don't want to cut them open if they're not, but I'm not sure. Yeah, we'll just we'll cut one open. Mm, I'm slightly concerned that it's not cooked all the way through. But that's been an hour. Surely it doesn't take that long to bake a potato. That's not cooked. <laughs> you know what, I'm just gonna cut them all open and then stick them back in. Hopefully that'll, hopefully that'll be a bit quicker. Yeah, so how many points are we talking, Eaterin? <laughs> and how many are you on at the moment? <laughs> okay. Oh yay! I was I was going to ask you, Flex, if you'd if you'd sorted that out. So that's good. At least now you can rest at home and you don't need to worry about having to go into work and be at work and not feeling very well. It's not, it's not ideal. Yeah, hopefully you're feeling better soon, Flex. Have you got a peppermint tea? I always find that that helps me if I'm gluten. Peppermint tea in a hot water bottle. That's what I, that's what I do. There's a community point pool challenge open. Right, so how does that work? Can I, hold on, what's this? So can I set that up? And does that mean that everybody together has to all use their points so we can find out your name? <laughs> 250 days to unlock confetti cannon. <laughs> well, because, right, I thought that would be a fun idea. So I, I am prepared just in case. I've got two confetti cannons. So I am gonna hate all life choices if anyone ever redeems that because it's, I mean, it's gonna take me weeks to clean it all out of my kitchen, but I thought it would be good fun. <laughs> you don't like tea? Oh, well, I don't feel like peppermint tea is really tea. Or if you don't like tea, if you got, you could get peppermint capsules. They're quite good as well. I find they work quite well. I've been working from home since March. I feel like a cave troll. <laughs> Is your home a cave, Foster? <laughs> but yeah, I know the feeling. It's yeah. I sometimes I'm like I don't actually know how to be a normal human when I go outside anymore. Like what, what do I need to take with me? How, how does it work just being outside? <gasps> you, you don't like peppermint at all, Hojo? That's madness. And set it up like any point redemption. Ooh, okay. Let me have a quick, a quick wee nosy. Hope that my apple juice is supposed to help. Ah, if you like apple juice, then you could try that. I hadn't heard.
heard that before. That's quite interesting. How long did it take to work out OBS overlays, changes, and all that? Flex, I am probably one of the most technically illiterate people. <laughs> I am, yeah, I'm really not good at these things, but it's actually quite straightforward. And if you need a hand, there are lots of people that I'm sure will help you. You can send us a wee message or something if you get stuck. But yeah, it's it's um, it's it's pretty straightforward once you get used to it. It's quite I, I would say it's all quite user friendly, which is good for me. It's all fairly obvious what you're doing. Like rooibos tea. Oh, me too. I like. I used to drink one. It was rooibos with vanilla. That was delicious. It was really, really nice. People can donate their points into the pool at this percent bar. It's that during the challenge time. Ah, okay. So you're gonna do one on your stream, Eteran. Is that what I'm getting? Or since we're all friends here, <laughs> you could just tell it. Oh, no worries, Sarah. I hope you have a good day at work. I hope it's not too stressful for you. Thank you very much. I will try if we ever get there, if the potatoes ever cook all the way through. <laughs> have a good day at work and it was lovely to see you. Hopefully see you later on tonight if you guys are streaming. I think I might soon. <laughs> well, if you do that, I'll tell you what you jam. <laughs> because I don't think you would guess my age either. Oh, thank you very much for your follow, Debam. Oh, right, hold on. Deba Milbrow? Is that how you say that? Deba? Debam? Deba? Thank you very much for your follow. Happy Wednesday. It's lovely to have you here. I hope you're well. We are, well, we're kind of making gnocchi. We're not really that far into it yet, to be fair. Um, so we've got our sauce, which is cooking away nicely. So I'll just leave that for a bit longer. Um, we'll taste it, maybe add a few bits if it needs it. Blitz it up and then add some mascarpone to make it a bit kind of creamy. And some spinach. The potatoes are in the oven, but they're taking a really long time to finish cooking. So once they come out, I should probably actually get the recipe ready for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so hold on, let me see. I did have it open. That's not it. Let's see, let me see. Um, menu. <laughs> Come on, get the recipe back up. I'm gonna open up my phone just so I've got it. Um. Yeah, so then once the potatoes are finished in the oven, and they're taking a really, really long time, but once they're finished, we'll take them out, we'll finish them off, and then we can start boiling them, and then we'll fry them, <laughs> and then we'll serve them with the sauce. Yes, so it's Deba, Deba Milgrau. I feel like that makes sense. <laughs> Thank you for confirming. <laughs> um, Lex, I have, so this one, for the overhead is a GoPro and then the main one, this one, is a, again, is that a DSLR? I think it's like a big camera, <laughs> it's a, a big one with a big lens and then this one is a webcam and it's just like a separate webcam. And then I've just got my laptop in front of me where I've got everything on. And yeah, obviously you don't need to have quite as many things on the go as I do, especially not from the, the beginning. <laughs> so I've done, so yeah, so I am actually a food blogger and I got into Twitch basically because, especially with the whole lockdown bit, and everything that's gone on, I've done a few different live cookings, like live cook-alongs on Facebook and on YouTube. So I kind of had, and obviously with the food blogging, I had like a kind of a certain setup already with the different cameras and stuff. So it was fairly straightforward for me to put them all together. Um, but yeah, it's it's not 
wouldn't say you need quite as many different things going on. But I do, I enjoy it because I think then you get a bit of an overall view. Like you can kind of pretty much see absolutely everything I'm doing. <laughs> um, is this the right recipe? I'm just checking my recipe so I can see what I need to do with the potatoes. And again, I'm scrolling down for most of my life. Okay. Let them cool slightly and then peel them, mash, add butter and salt. Let's get the butter and salt out. And then we're gonna add all purpose gluten-free flour. So I'm just gonna use um, plain flour. And flex if you're interested. I tend to use, I mean pretty much any time I'm using any kind of flour, it's the Dove's Farm stuff. I find it works pretty well. I've never really had any disasters with it. Plus it, I find that it's the easiest one for us to get. So that tends to be the one I go for. So I'm just going to use a plain flour. Um, okay. I wish the potatoes would hurry up. Like you're making homemade croissant, gluten-free croissant, and homemade smoked salmon. <laughs> Have you made? Have you made gluten-free croissants before? Does it work? And do you have a recipe that you can share with me? <laughs> oh my god, that sounds incredible. We were talking about smoking salmon the other day, actually. So Eater, <coughs> excuse me, Eater, and gave me some very good tips. I think I'm, I'm going to give that a give that a bash. I use my phone as a remote camera. I'm cooking in a tripod. It gives, yeah, that's it. I mean, everybody has such a different setup that I quite enjoy watching different people set up just to see how they do it, and it's like a different experience. So yeah, like you don't need to go mad with a setup, especially to begin with. Oh, thank you very much, Flex. And have you made this before? And does it work? I need to check this out very quickly. Mm. Right, I'm going to check on the potatoes again because I'm getting slightly bored waiting for them. <laughs> Impatient, come on. <laughs> I mean, they're big potatoes, but they're not that big. Do you know what I think it is? I think it's actually the type of potatoes that I've used. Right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take two. They're to die for. <gasps> right, I need, to, I need to be, I need to get on that. Is it a bit of a process, Flex? Like, with the whole puff pastry bit. I feel like it would be worth it though if they work because that is the one gluten-free thing that I really, really miss that I can't get because you just, you can't buy them. I cannot believe how long, this is why I don't bake potatoes in the oven because <laughs> it just takes too long. <laughs> big one back in because it's not it's not anywhere close oh my golly gosh golly <laughs> the process is a process yeah that that's that's what I was thinking I mean if you know that it's worth it if you know that it works and it, it's tasty by the end of it then I get that I think I was always just kind of concerned to start because I thought if this doesn't work I'm wasting a lot of time <laughs> It was a bit like me with a gluten-free ravioli. That was a process. 
We got there eventually, but golly gosh, golly gosh, that was a process. I have to leave these to cool a bit, but you have to be somewhat skilled. Oh dear. <laughs> these are still hard. Bits of them are that right. This is ridiculous. <laughs> Should have just done them in the make. I wonder if I could just put them in the microwave now. I'm gonna put this one back in the oven. Oh, it's hot. Very, very hot. <laughs> yeah, if you have to be somewhat skilled, that might be tricky. <laughs> I'm not sure how well we would go on with that. What's that? You can see what it is I'm working with here. So basically, the point of this, right, flex. See, this is this, right? This, <laughs> that's what I would normally do. And I have made them before with boiled papers. <laughs> but I saw in this recipe that they say that to do it this way, because you're not boiling them in water, the, potatoes aren't taking on any extra water so it'll make like a fluffier gnocchi and because I've tried them in the boiled way I thought I'll give this a go and see if this works and see which is better but I now understand why I boil them because even though boiling potatoes I find takes a really long time this is ridiculous <laughs> thank you girl of bakes I appreciate it oh right and it says to leave them to cool for a minute, but impatient, so. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know if this is gonna work. Um, we'll soon find out. Plus the other thing is, so these are potatoes that I get from like a veggie box. So I don't ever actually know what kind of potatoes exactly they are. So I never know because you know how you're like you get certain potatoes that you're supposed to use for boiling and some for mashing and um, some for roasting but I have no idea what these are so sometimes they work well sometimes they don't. <laughs> Do you have any gluten free restaurants in Glasgow? There's quite a few gluten free restaurants in Glasgow and a few really good ones. I would say one of my favourites is Tocolabamba. I don't know if you've been there but it's a Mexican restaurant and I really like how they so they basically they don't actually tell you on the menu what is gluten free they tell you what's not gluten free and I always think that just makes us feel so much better <laughs> my studied food safety gluten particles yeah that's the thing like ideally they should to be saying that their stuff is gluten free they should really have two separate areas for prepping food but obviously that would be like that's a huge commitment for restaurants and in the grand scheme of things there aren't a lot of people that are gluten free I suppose it's, it's difficult for me as well because I am gluten intolerant rather than celiac it's I'm normally okay like if I if chips have been fried in the same fryer obviously I'd rather if they were separate um <coughs> Excuse me, but yeah, like there's a there's a restaurant in in the city centre which they actually have a full low FODMAP menu as well, <coughs> and I've got a feeling they've got two separate areas for preparing them. So like the gluten free stuff's prepared separately. I'm not quite sure what's happened to my voice. Right now. <laughs> I think that's how I'm becoming a man. It's now it's breaking. That's me. <laughs> But yeah, so does that mean Flex, if you go out for something to eat, then do you like make sure you phone up beforehand and check what they can do for you and what like their their sort of their processes are and stuff? Because I think that is important, especially if you are celiac, because you don't want to make yourself really unwell. And it's a long-term damage as well that's not that's not any good. Well we managed to mash a half of a potato, so slowly but surely. <laughs> It's 
just it's so solid. Ponytail! Look <laughs> I didn't have a ponytail the other day. I find a ponytail so much easier when I'm cooking. How are you, Luco? Are you having a good Wednesday? I hope you're well. We're making, well, we're a part, a, attempting to make gnocchi. So we're scooping out the potatoes. I've made roast, like baked potatoes instead of boiled potatoes for this one. See if it works. So it's Thursday. It's not. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I was gonna say, have I lost a day? <laughs> Like, I know I was asleep for a while, but surely I didn't sleep a full day away. <laughs> Don't do that to me, Luco. <laughs> no worries, eat it in. Thank you very much for your lurk. And then when you come back, we want some information from you. <laughs> Thank you as well for your lurk, girl who bakes. Much appreciated. It's your Thursday, right, okay. I feel better now. I nearly went to go and check my my calendar, I was like, surely it's not. <laughs> I was like, and also, I don't stream on a Thursday, what am I doing? <laughs> so, look, oh, how was your Thursday? And Saturday's Monday and Monday is wet. That's too much, look, oh. <laughs> As long as you know where you're at. How was your day? Day, Luco. I hope you're having a good day, whatever day it is. <laughs> Your head, I'm not surprised. That's ridiculous. <laughs> I don't normally check ahead of time my phone on a day. Yeah, that's good because that's that's the way you should be. And then you want places to understand, like celiac and gluten free, and and to be to have that kind of trust in them. And I think the celiac app's quite good for that, Flex, if you've, if you've got that already, that you can see on there what um, restaurants are being accredited and things and different products and stuff. Not as good as it could be. Aww. Well, I hope it gets better for you, Luco. Nice to see It's nice to see you too. Lovely. <laughs> Thank you very much. I was just thinking, I felt like I was, um, I was in a bit of a rush earlier. I, um, I spent far too long watching Purple Coffins, as always, and um, yeah, we're running a wee bit late. <laughs> but I'm here. So yeah, it was a case of throw the hair up out of my face so I can see what I'm doing. I just feel like I've got a really big forehead when I do that though. <laughs> I do it good, because it, it can be really, really helpful. Are there many nice, um, are there many nice gluten-free restaurants in Dundee, Flex? I've only been there, I've been in Dundee once, I think. And I went to, oh, thank you very much for your follow. It's Artie. Lovely to have you here. I hope you're well. Um, yeah, I've been to Dundee once, I think. And I went to the city, was it the city Apex Hotel? And they had their gluten-free food was really, really nice. I was very impressed. Sounds like a perfectly acceptable thing to do, yeah. And quite a common one, Luco. I do it most most Wednesdays. <laughs> I just can't help it. I love her streams. And I really, I really want to see the garlic bread bowl that she's making. She always comes up with really fun things to do. Right, so we are, yeah, so if you've just joined, um, I thought I was being clever and I found a recipe that, so it's a gluten-free recipe and it's to make gnocchi and it says instead of boiling the potatoes beforehand, which can cause like the potatoes to take on water, a better way of doing it is to bake the potatoes first because then you're not getting any extra water in there and it'll make it extra fluffy. But it's taken about well over an hour <laughs> just to bake the potatoes. <laughs> so I'm kind of wishing I either had just done them in the microwave or I had just boiled them like a normal gnocchi making person. <laughs> but we're nearly there now. 
It's mashing quite well, so that's good. I didn't think it would because they felt really hard when they came out of the oven, but it's mashed quite well. So there's three halves still in the oven, so I'll see if they're done now. And then we can mash them together as well. Tahini, ooh, I've not heard of that one. I'll need to, I'll need to write that down and check that out if I'm ever over in Dundee again. Taking longer, aha, uh -huh. I know, I know it's ridiculous. Like I always feel like cooking potatoes takes long enough as it is, but this is excessive. So I'm just gonna take these out. I'm not even gonna check they're ready and we'll just, I'll just be strong and mash them as much as I can. We've got a nice kind of brown crust to them. <laughs> Possibly slightly overdone. So there's our other three potato halves. Um, I'll just stick this in the bin. Um, yeah, so we'll mash these up and then we're going to add flour, butter and salt to them to make it into like a kind of dough and then I can roll it out, cut it into lots of little pieces and then from there we're going to boil them very quickly just to cook them through and to that'll make them kind of go fluffy and then I want to fry them in a pan with a little bit of oil just to kind of get that crispy, crispy edge and then we'll serve them with the sauce which is all, almost already done because we've spent so long waiting on the potatoes. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dana doll. <laughs> so what kind of food do you get at Tahini Flex? That does sound good. Hmm. Yeah, I'm, now, I'm, I'm getting hungry now. This is, this is a problem and it takes too long. I think, do you know what I think it is? I think it's actually the potatoes. Because I think they're not meant to be baked. <laughs> they're not happy with what I've done to them. And I'm not really sure what they could be used for if they don't want to be baked because... No, oh, they're okay. They're all right when you start smashing them with a fork. <laughs> really hot though, you should leave them to cool, but... I just want to get a move along and have some dinner at some point today. Yeah, so the recipes, <laughs> if you're interested, because I've sold them so well, um, if you do command this one, oh, help if I was actually in a little bit. There you go. So those are the recipes. The recipe for the sauce is, it's there or thereabouts to what I'm doing. Um, it was more just for an idea and then I've kind of adapted it slightly just with what I like to put in a tomato sauce. But yeah, it's just a basic tomato sauce with some mascarpone, some spinach, and I'll put some basil on the top. It should be quite tasty because I'm one of these people, like I like gnocchi when it's fried. I hadn't realised that it wasn't, like at first I thought, mm, I'm not a big fan of this, but it was, that was always because it was boiled rather than fried. But yeah, it's much nicer fried, I think. This is quite tricky when it's that hot. <laughs> oh. At least I suppose then, I need to get the, hold on. <laughs> let me check my, let me check my recipe. Add the butter. Um, how much butter do we need? Oh, it's melted, right, okay, that's, that's why. Because I thought if I start adding butter to this, surely I want a bit of warmth left in the potatoes to help, um, like to help mix it through but it's to be melted and cooled. So I should maybe do that first. Two tablespoons. And if you've not seen anything that I've done before, I, so I do bake sometimes. I'm not a big fan of baking, mainly because I don't really like following recipes exactly. <laughs> so I do tend to just kind of make stuff up and, 
add bits and see see what works. So cooking is much more my my cup of tea. I think also with gluten free baking, it's a bit hit or miss as well. So sometimes, and I think you can spend a lot of time on baking, and then for it not to work because you've used gluten free flour is really frustrating. Head into my my microwave cupboard. Oh, and the cat's come to say hello. This is when he really enjoys standing right behind me. While I'm waiting for the butter, I'm going to feed them. It's funny, if anyone else has cats, so I've got two and they are lit literally like clockwork. They appear at six o'clock for their dinner because six o'clock six o'clock is literally dinner time for them so at six o'clock they are here ready for their dinner but I'll give them that just now and then them. oh I'm sorry Flex that is rubbish have you got anything you can or hot have you got a hot water bottle I find that helps me quite a lot really don't know where I had gluten oh, it's so frustrating especially like if you knew that that you'd eaten something and you're like, well, it's my own fault. Like, I shouldn't have eaten that. I knew, but if you've got no idea where it came from and if you've been careful, it's so frustrating. So don't worry, Flex. You just look after yourself and make sure that you're you're feeling a bit better. But maybe try a hot water bottle if you've got one. That's quite often the only thing that I can get to like be comfortable at all if I've been glutened. and lots of water, try and flush it out. <laughs> Meanwhile, I just weed the cats in the middle of the street. <laughs> oh yeah, such a crazy cat lady. Here you go. Right, that's them sorted. <laughs> You're having my full attention again. Oh, uh, butter. Like, what, what was I doing a minute ago? Mm, I think that'll... I'm always super careful. Oh, it's so annoying. It wasn't the chocolate. Yeah, that's it. Especially if you make stuff yourself, like, you know exactly what's in it. And if it's if you've got a gluten free kitchen, then you think, well, this is not possible. Oh, I am sorry, Flex. I hope it passes soon, but I know I fully understand your pain. And there's, it's really, it's really not much fun at all. But yeah, lots of, lots of water, lots of rest. Try and sleep it off, even, but. Thank goodness you're not at work. At least that's one good thing. So this is actually quite, so it said in the recipe to use four large potatoes. I only used three, um, but it still seems like quite a lot of potato. So that's good, I suppose. But this one definitely doesn't feel like it's cooked all the way through. It's still a bit hard. But I'm just going to scrape out as much as I can and then we'll try and mash, mash it as best we can. I feel like this is a better way of doing it. Normally I would use a masher, but I think it doesn't really get it as fine because they say that with gnocchi you're best to use a potato ricer. Which I don't own. <laughs> I don't know that many people that own a potato writer, but then I maybe should get one. Oh, no worries at all, Flex. I hope you get sorted and you can get comfy. I'll be here. I'll be here for a while yet, so you're fine. <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> right, last last chunk. I, I mean. I don't know if you can see that, it's like, that's been in the oven for over an hour and I'm still trying to scrape the potato away. This is why those, oh that's really hot, um, 
this is why those like McCain ready-made jacket potatoes that you put they've already been baked and you put them in the oven for like five minutes this is why they are so popular because <laughs> this is ridiculous <laughs> Okay, I think that'll do for the, the potato. I think that'll do. And the butter is melted and cooled. I think I'm gonna get a bigger bowl as well because when I start trying to mix this, it's I'm probably gonna make a mess. <laughs> the cats are very pleased. Normally if I stream I forget about them and they, they don't get their dinner until later and they are furious. <laughs> so I think they're quite happy today. That the, the badgering paid off. Okay. So it looks fairly smooth, I would say. I don't know if you can see it there anyway. But yeah, so it looks pretty smooth. There are no big lumps that I can see. Apart from that one. Okay. So, and because I was fine with these recipes, it's a bit tricky because it just says like four potatoes. So I use three large potatoes. But what weight is that? So there's weights and things for all the other bits. But surely that depends on how much weight of potatoes you actually use. <laughs> so we're just going to wing it. We like doing that here. So why stop? <laughs> And that's to be cool, that is cool, perfect. So that's just some melted butter. And then I'm going to add a little bit of salt. Not that much salt. Mmm, not much. This is, this is what I mean, this is the kind of cooking that I like, where it's literally just a case of, hmm, I think that seems about right, we'll, we'll go with that, that'll be fine. And then how much flour? Um, one cup. Shall we just go with one cup? Let's see what one cup looks like. I'm gonna sieve it. Not sure why. I just feel like that it makes sense to sieve it. <laughs> so let's try a cup. And I've done it again. These these jars are genius until you want to measure stuff out and you can't get the, the cup into the top. Right, so a cup of flour. And again, the recipe says it's all purpose, which I think is just plain. So we're using plain because obviously you don't need it to like rise or anything. So we're just going to go with plain. That seems like quite a lot of flour. Hmm. We'll maybe do half at a time and mix it in because I don't want to add too much and then it to be really floury. So let's try half. And we'll see how that looks. <gasps> I'm really good at getting flour absolutely everywhere. Okay. I'm not entirely sure it's been such a long time since I've made this. I've made it once and I made like a baked um, gnocchi. So I made the gnocchi and then I filled each one with a little bit of mozzarella. And I mean they were huge, <laughs> they were like big chunky, uh, chunky gnocchis. But they were really nice but it was such a long time since I've done them I can't really remember what the dough was like. Although I would say that sounds quite good. What does the recipe say? Um, Oh, this is the problem. I should really read the recipe before I get too carried away. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, we've done the recipe wrong. <laughs> it says, place the, place the mashed potatoes in a large bowl, add the butter and salt, and mix to combine. Cover the bowl and place in the refrigerator until no longer warm. Remove the potatoes from the refrigerator, uncover the bowl and add almost all of the flour and xanthan gum, reserving a few tablespoons. Mix with a spoon and then switch to kneading the dough together with clean hands. It should hold together well, feel firm but not dry. Do we need to put this in the fridge? Do we really? Possibly, it's still quite warm. <laughs> Although, I mean, that's sticking quite well together. It feels nice and fluffy. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a little bit of Zansam gum. So if you're not gluten free, Zansam gum is basically, it's like a, oh, magical. I don't know if you can see that, but there's just like steam coming out of it. Um, it's, yeah, it's like a, I don't even know what, how you would describe it, but it basically helps to bind gluten-free baked goods. So obviously if it is, if something is gluten-free, you don't have that gluten to kind of hold it together and to make it kind of stretchy. So xanthan gum is one thing that you can use to kind of mimic that. The only thing with it is it's very gummy which sounds ridiculous, but if you use too much of it, it can taste horrible. It can taste really, really like stretchy and elasticy. So I would normally, if I'm using it, if I'm making like a cake or a loaf or something, as long as there's a fair amount of dough, I normally use about half a teaspoon. A lot of flour mixes do have it in already, but I normally will add a little bit extra. But yeah, I have made stuff before and put far too much gum in and you're like, I can't eat that. <laughs> Just the gum has made it inedible. Right, what do we think? She said, the recipe says to knead it, but why Why would you knead it? I don't, <laughs> I don't really understand. So let me see. Let, let us, let's try and kind of fake a little bit of gnocchi. That's quite a large bit of gnocchi, but... I think that looks pretty good. And again, I'm not sure why you would... Right, let's leave it to cool. Let's chuck it in a bowl. We'll leave it to cool for a minute. And in that minute, I can finish the sauce. So that'll be fine. Although it's, it's definitely cooling down already. Right, this is going in the fridge. If I can find a space, I'm not going to be able to find a space today, my fridge is full. Uh, no, let's, let's wrap it in cling film first. <laughs> let's wrap it in cling film. And we'll pop it in the fridge, just until I finish the, the rest of the sauce and then we'll get it out again and finish it off. Oh, I'm glad, Flex, that's good. Hopefully now you can just chill out, not have to worry too much. Hopefully the medication will kick in. But yeah, that is rotten. I fully understand what you're going through. I still can't find the space in the fridge. This is ridiculous. That's not going to fit in there. Um, <laughs> just <laughs> prop it on top of the apples. Okay, so I've poured flour all over the floor, but to the mashed potatoes, if you missed it, to the mashed potatoes we've added some butter, half a cup of flour, half a teaspoon of xanthan gum, and about a teaspoon of salt. I'll need a bit more flour when I'm rolling it out, but I'm just going to tidy up a wee bit first. So we just mix all of them together and popped it in the fridge just to cool. I'm not entirely sure why, 
or what the purpose of that is because we're just going to be boiling it anyway but maybe it'll maybe it kind of helps hold it together a bit better right so i'll keep the flour out get rid of all of this stuff and then while we're waiting for the stuff to cool down i'm gonna finish off the sauce so that it's ready to go because obviously once the once we get started more on the gnocchi that'll take up probably most of my attention <laughs> and I emptied my dishwasher before the stream so I have space to put things in <laughs> which is so exciting because every time I stream I start streaming and go oh, my dishwasher's full <laughs> every time are you going to hand roll the gnocchi? I am, yeah. So I think what I'm going to do is just um, roll it into like a kind of a long sausage and then cut it into chunks. So I have, I've made gnocchi I think just once before but I did filled gnocchi. So they were quite different because they were really chunky. And obviously like you were shaping them differently because they were filled. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna give that a go and just hand roll it. I think you use like a kind of fork to get the little indents in. It's so nice to load this where it is and I every time I start and I'm like oh. <laughs> I'm gonna pile the dishes everywhere. <laughs> Cron, hello, how are you today? Nice to see you again. I'm sorry if you missed me yesterday. Um, didn't work out yesterday. I spent most of the day sleeping. But I'm feeling better today and back on it. So we're all good. So we are making gnocchi. Homemade potato gluten-free gnocchi with um, a tomato mascarpone spinach sauce. So the potatoes took about... That sounded quite nice. The potatoes! <laughs> the potatoes took about um, an hour and a half <laughs> to cook. So they're done now. They are, we've mixed them up with a few other bits and pieces, flour, butter and salt and xanthan gum and they're in the fridge cooling. Um, the sauce is almost ready so I'm going to finish that off just now so I'll show you that in a wee second. And then we can roll out the gnocchi boil them, then fry them, and then serve everything together. <laughs> so, let's see. I remember the dishwasher we had, she packed up. Oh. <laughs> she packed up. I know, it's, yeah, see that? See if, if I could pay someone to come and just clean up the kitchen after I'm finished dreaming. That'd be so good. That's a dream. That is a dream. <laughs> As I was saying, I'm like, it's it it probably takes me, what say three, three and a bit hours for streaming, and then I probably spend another half of that on top just cleaning the kitchen after. I'm okay. Oh, well I'm sad to hear that it's not a great day, Tron, but hopefully your evening will be a bit better. And it's not we're not too far away from the weekend. So that's, that's always good. It could be worse. Yeah. But that's sad. I'm sorry to hear that, Tron. I'm good, thank you. I was a bit poorly the last couple of days, so that's why I didn't stream yesterday. Um, I'm not quite sure what it was. At first I thought it was maybe hay fever. And then it felt like a cold. But I slept. I said I slept for like two days. And that that pretty much sorted me out so it was possible I maybe just needed sleep <laughs> but yeah feeling much better now so but yeah I hope you have a nicer evening Tron and hopefully we can we can brighten your day a little bit here that's great to get the clean ball oh it sounds like you've got your hands full flex it definitely sounds like you've got a lot going on in that house of yours. But yeah, that's it. I think if we, it's all about priorities, isn't it? Oh no, that's the wrong one, hold on. Um, 
just need to find a plug. Right, I'm going to turn this round. I'm going to blitz this now. In fact, I might try it first actually. That's probably a good idea. Just to see if we need anything else. Maybe a little bit more sugar. And then, oh, and then we're just gonna blitz that up and add a, a little bit of mascarpone, just to give it that kind of creamy, creamy tomato. Wonderful, I have three kids in the house, two parents. Oh, seven of you. Jeez, yeah, that's, that's full on. But hopefully you can retreat a bit away in your bed just now and and look after yourself this evening and hopefully you'll be feeling a bit better. Um, okay, I'm going to put this on mute very briefly because I don't want to deafen everybody when I do my blending because I'll be standing right at it. So I'm going to mute you for just a wee second and I will be back in a wee minute. I'm back. <laughs> I hate doing that because I always think it's going to be so loud for everybody and I really don't want to deafen anyone. I like to retreat into the bedroom. Oh that's good if they know that they have to leave you alone if you're in there. So you can get some peace. Because yeah there's there's nothing worse especially if you're feeling rotten like that you just want your you just want your peace and quiet and not to have to worry about anybody else. Johnny! How are you, my friend? It's been a while. I hope you're good. I hope you're having a good Wednesday. Off I go. No worries, Luca. I hope you have a nice, a good sleep and a nice whatever day it is for you tomorrow after you've slept. <laughs> Thank you very much. I will do my best to enjoy it. <laughs> and it was lovely to have you here. Have a good night, Luca. Right. So, the sauce is blitzed, and now I'm going to add, let's try a table, oh, that's solid. I wasn't thinking mascarpone was as solid as that, oh, <laughs> and splashed everywhere, good. Um, yeah, so that's about a tablespoon, maybe a bit more of mascarpone, and I'm just going to let it kind of melt into the sauce. And that's just going to make the sauce a bit creamier. Busy, busy, work, work, parents, others. Do we have an end date yet, Johnny? Are we... Is there a... Um, a light at the end of that tunnel? <laughs> Hopefully not too far off. Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Had a bit of a... I don't even know what it was, but I feel like it was just a cold. A bit of a cold the last couple of days, so... I was feeling a bit sorry for myself, but I'm feeling feeling much better today, so. Sorry the weekday thing name. <laughs> too what day it is. Yeah, Loco, you just you just tell me what day it is for you and I'll go with it. It's fine. 
Yeah, no, that's that must be tricky. But at least it's night time now, so go and have a good sleep. And then you can figure out the day again in the morning. <laughs> no, oh no. <laughs> oh, surely it can't take too much longer. I'm loving how we're, we're um, widening the Scottish community here. That says we've now got a Fifonian. Is that what it's called? A Fifonian? That sounds weird. And a Dundee. -ian. <laughs> and that, I know that's just wrong. <laughs> right, this isn't really mixing very well. Maybe put the heat up a wee bit. Oh. Oh. Blackout windows. I hope you have some good blackout windows, Luco, because it sounds like you might need them. But if you're tired enough, I'm sure you'll be able to get to sleep. Have a little whiskey and that'll knock you out. <laughs> good luck, Luco. <laughs> Waking up. <gasps> Ron. You are far too good, so thank you very much for the three gifted subs. That is very kind of you. It's much appreciated. And I'm sad that you're not having a good day because you've just made my day much better. <laughs> and welcome to Premier Hemlock and Flex. <laughs> welcome all to the Confetti Clan. Big thanks to Tron. Tron is an absolute gem of a person. Every, honestly, far too good, Tis. Far too good. Bye, Luco. <laughs> yes, all the love to Tron. Wait on dry certificate. Oh, of course. Yeah, we're already in, lo in lockdown. Well, we have been for a while, but... Oh, that is not ideal. Hopefully it won't be too much longer, Johnny. And thank you very much again, Tron. Thank you, kind sir. Exactly. What a kind sir Tron is. <laughs> no worries, Flex. I understand. I get it completely. I have been there many a time. Yay! That's exactly, that's the little one that we went. Or I'm the wrong, I'm the wrong way down. <laughs> How are the taters? Eating the tater, taters. What are they called? Uh, thing me, taters. Um, the taters are in the fridge. They cooked eventually. It took us quite a long time, but we got there eventually. So they're in the fridge with the other bits and pieces in them. I'm just waiting for them to cool down slightly and then we can do um, rolling them out and chopping them up. The sauce is just about finished, I'm just trying to get the mascarpone to melt into it. Uh, taters. Need to clean. <gasps> Johnny, that would be amazing. I'll send you a wee DM after. Because that's what I was just thinking, I need something more exciting. <laughs> I had thought that or some music or something. So yes, I'll send you a wee DM after. And that would be amazing if you could help me because as, as you know as well, I am um, fairly illiterate <laughs> when it comes to these things. The gnocchi I'm going to boil and then pan fry because I, I don't, I'm not a big fan of just boiled gnocchi. I don't think, I don't really like the texture of it. I feel like gnocchi is really, really nice if it's been fried. Because other than that, I think if it's with a sauce, it's just all a bit, all a bit kind of like mush. Yes. <laughs> what you do, do you boil and then fry or do you just boil? Because I do feel like it, you need to fry it really. I'm tempted to blitz this again because for some reason, I mean, it is hot enough. Right, I'm gonna mute myself again. You boil and pan fry, good. I am glad to heat it. <laughs> I feel like that's the only way to make gnocchi. 
Right, I'm gonna mute myself again for just a wee second and blitz like, uh, what's it called? <laughs> blitz the mascarpone into the sauce. Get some colour on the gnocchi, exactly. You want a bit of colour on them, because otherwise they just look a bit sad. So, yeah. I'm all about pan frying the gnocchi. Coffee. Johnny, <laughs> I don't, right, I'm going to drink water, thank you. Um, I don't think decaf coffee would really have the same effect, but I appreciate that you, you're fully aware of what the situation <laughs> is going on here. <laughs> Let's go coffee time, I wish. I don't even have anything else I can drink. I was thinking I might get a can of coke, but I don't know if that would wake me up or make me sleepy. No worries, Johnny. Okay. Sauce is done. It looks much better now that I've blitzed it. Because I was really struggling to get the, the mascarpone to mix. Nest quick, I love Nest quick. <laughs> the strawberry one, yum. <laughs> It's such like a children's drink, I love it. Okay, I'm gonna go and grab my cold potatoes now, hopefully. Mm. Well they're not they're not warm anymore, so almost looks like oh it's it does actually. It looks slightly darker in real life than excuse me than it does on the camera. Um but yeah, it does look quite like butternut core soup. Strawberry nest quick is your favorite. Yes, so many people like the, the chocolate one and I do not understand it. I don't like the chocolate one at all. The strawberry one is by far superior. <laughs> um, I might just get rid of my chopping board and we can now start rolling out our gnocchi. Well, I might actually put the pan on. Chocolate one makes me nasally. <laughs> That's a bit weird. That's a very specific um, issue to have from chocolate nest quick. I just don't like, like, oh, I like um, hot chocolate, but I don't like cold chocolate, if that makes sense. Right, let's put this on. some water boiling for the gnocchi. Could just be the milk, it could just be the milk, yeah. <laughs> I think that's quite an, a common thing, isn't it? That milk can kind of make you a bit nasally. Right, oh no. I did this before I changed my gander. There we go. So, uh, I'll maybe do it in quarters and then I'm just kind of making this up as I go along but I think I'm just going to kind of roll it. That's a lot of flour. Kind of roll it until it becomes 
problems like exhausted shape. Although in theory, uh, it's all coming apart. Why? I'm tapped shot. How big should Gnocchi be? Is that too big? <laughs> Is that quite a big chunk of gnocchi? I mean, I like bigger, bigger chunks of gnocchi. So this is one problem that I always find a dad. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> Sorry. How's that? Is that better? That's still quite big. Because that's one fine thing I find with gluten-free cooking is um, the more flour you add, like it's already quite crumbly as it is. Um, so the more flour you add, the more crumbly it's going to be. So ideally, you don't want to add too much flour. So that's why I'm thinking I now do them individually just like that. Just kind of shape them. Because, I mean, it's not going to take all night. <laughs> I really hope these stay together. I don't think I used a recipe at all the last time I made these. I think I just kind of went with it and they worked really well and I feel like quite often that's the best way to do it because sometimes if I use a recipe it's not quite as good as if I just kind of winged it. I'm going to be here for such a long time if I do this all individually. Seemed like a good idea at the time. They're getting bigger again. So we chose you one. Right, no, this, this is going to take me too long. <laughs> Let me see what I can do with this. Can I roll, just roll this out without all the extra flour? Let's try. Are we staying together? Yeah, that's better. I think that'll work. I'll get a, a wee knife and start with our gnocchi water. Put another, another kettle full. I almost died yesterday when, did you see it, when Casey poured his hot water from his pot into the pot noodle. <laughs> I was just waiting for it to go everywhere, I was like that is so dangerous, why do you not have a kettle? <laughs> okay, maybe a wee bit thinner. It's starting to fall apart again already. How annoying. Oh, that's cute. Okay, this is working. Oh, okay, they look cute. 
happier with them now, now than I am with the with the first lot I did. Good technique. Yeah. Much better. I know that that kit honestly got when he brought out that pot, I was just waiting for it all to go all over the the counter. This is a terrible idea, Casey. <laughs> But then I guess if you guys don't have kettles, that must be the way you do it. That's so dangerous. <laughs> so, so dangerous. Yeah, I feel like this is much quicker. I mean, it, it definitely could be holding together a bit better. But. Oh, Eater, and how did your meatball go? Because I missed the end of it. Or did I? No, I didn't. I fell asleep. That's what I was. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it was late, like, you know. <laughs> That's it, you made your meatball. Which I think you should patent. <laughs> I think you should patent the meatball, I'll give you it, it's fine. Good. I'm excited to see it. Oh, so Flex, if you're about next week, um, I don't know if you heard at the beginning, I was saying that there's a noodle week. So... A load of food and drink streamers are all getting together and doing some kind of a noodle recipe. So it's organised by Minnesota Toz, who is an Englishman who lives in Minnesota now. <laughs> he, so he's putting it together and everybody's making something to do with noodles. So on Wednesday, yes, on Wednesday next week, I will be making gluten-free macaroni cheese pies. And Eaterin is going to be making a giant meatball stuffed with spaghetti. I'm so excited. He chopped it up and saved it. Nice. It looked really good. I loved your moulds. This is quite a lot of gnocchi now, actually. I've got a horrible feeling that I'm just going to put this into the pan and it's just all going to go. I really hope it stays. I'm now really concerned that that's what's going to happen. And then I'm just going to have a wet, toma a wet potato mess and uh, tomato sauce. <laughs> okay, do we do the first batch to see? <laughs> Just to check, maybe as a test. Have I got a spoon? My spoon. Here's my spoon. Um, how can it is? Here it is. Be gentle, I think it'll be okay. Yeah. Let's, let's see. Yeah, I think a tester could be a good idea. Because if I need to change any of this dough, I'm best to do it now before I've spent too long um, rolling it all out. Let's, are you going to be able to see that? Okay. I could really just turn these around, couldn't I? Let me swap these round. So you can get the full experience of the gnocchi. Okay. Oh, I'm nervous now. So I'm going to bring that to the boil and then we'll pop our first, oh, first wee chunks of gnocchi in. I nearly forgot that we want those kind of 
orc marks in them. Do we want them? I mean, I'm now just squashing them, so I'm not sure that that's actually bringing anything to the table at all. <laughs> just get squashed, gnocchi. Do we need the ridges and the gnocchi? Hey, come on now. Hurry along, please. There's our three wee tester, test subjects. And if everybody could cross their fingers and pray and do whatever you, whatever you need to do, that these are gonna stick together. Well, not together, but like, separately together. I think I could do with that coffee. <laughs> My brain has stopped working entirely today. I feel like my everything here is like going at the speed of how I feel. <laughs> and Etern, you've still got some information you want to share with us. Here we go, almost. I want it to be a bit more boiling than that. But for some reason, it's taking its time. And we're getting there though, we've got little bubbles. I mean, they are just, these ones are just testers, so I guess I could just pop them in now. Are we ready, are we ready? The suspense, <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm just, I'm hoping these now float to the surface. Oh, no worries, Flex, you, you should. Please do. Go and look after yourself. I hope you feel better. Yeah, no, you should. You should go and shut your eyes. Hopefully get a, a wee rest and hopefully you'll be feel be feeling better soon. A cooking podcast. <laughs> it's just a shame. It's just a shame you have to listen to me talk rubbish for the next hour or so. But, <laughs> but I hope you're feeling better. It was lovely to have you here and hopefully we'll see you again soon, Flex, when you're feeling a bit better. How long do these take to actually boil? Because <laughs> I think they should just float to the top, shouldn't they? Let me check. Um, what does she say? Boiling three minutes until they float to the top. Okay. <laughs> Aww. At least it's been a while, but ho and hopefully it'll be a while before you have to go through it again. But yeah, I hope you're feeling better soon, Flex. Yeah, I think my pan needs to be hotter. <laughs> but it's, it's a test, it's fine. <laughs> the next ones will be much better. Oh, look, here it comes. Like, there it is. Are they still in one piece? Oh, isn't that beautiful? Can you see that? Isn't that beautiful? That makes me happy. Plus they're still in one piece. Nice. I wasn't expecting that to go that way. Oh, they feel so fluffy. Right, bye Flex. Have a good sleep, a good rest. Okay, so let's... Right, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna roll the rest out really quickly so that I'm, so that I'm ready to go. Oh, yes, please do. I'd be very interested to hear, but yeah, wait until tomorrow, there's no rush. Yeah, no, Flex, wait until tomorrow. <laughs> please do, you're absolutely fine. Take tonight to, to recover. For that. Gluten with a person. What a, what, what trouble it would be in. Doesn't make me so angry. Have you ever made yaki eater in? Is it something you've made before? 
feel like it's not something like even in restaurants you don't really see, tend to see it that often i mean here anyway okay I mean, they're all very much different shapes and sizes, but we all are, so, <laughs> so why should the gnocchi not be the same? So what did they say this was? Four servings, I think. Yeah, that seems reasonable, I would say. And I think... Right, chopping these up now, there are definitely some potato chunks in there. So I think if I had a potato ricer, it would have been slightly better because I would have got all of the lumps out. But you do what, you, what you've got, you deal with what you've got, so it'll be fine. And I'm pleased with how fluffy they went when they all floated up to the top. So once they've all floated up to the top, once we've put them in and they've all floated, um, we're then going to just quickly fry them in a little bit of oil and then we'll serve with the sauce some basil and some, I'm yet to decide, I think I might put a little bit of spinach in the sauce and kind of wilt it down in the sauce and then just some basil on top. So that's the thinking. This one could possibly do with a little bit more flour because it's, it's all sticking. But yeah, you get a, a decent amount from this. And I only use three potatoes rather than four. So if you actually follow the recipe properly, <laughs> which I don't tend to do, um, you would probably get four portions. I think that seems realistic. Right, let's pop these up. And I'm not sure, like, I read when I was looking this up, I read that you want to kind of press it down a little bit with a fork. I was trying that and I think because my dough's still quite wet because I don't want to put too much flour in because I feel like they'll all fall apart because that's what tends to happen with gluten-free stuff. Um, when I'm trying to press them down with a fork it's just squashing them and I feel like that's just for aesthetic reasons <laughs> so I'm just not going to bother <laughs> it's possibly like some kind of Italian blasphemy but there's not going to be any Italian heat in it so <laughs> hopefully I'll be okay Yay! Okay. So we have all of our gnocchi. So now, let me switch this over again. The water is boiling. This looks much better. And I'm just gonna slowly but surely. Or should I squash it? Oh. Nah, that doesn't do anything. <laughs> There's no point. And then, so I'm not gonna, I don't wanna overfill the pan. I'm just gonna keep going until, I don't know why they're all congregating in the middle. But I'm hoping they'll all float to the top without all sticking together. Please don't stick together. Why, why have they done that? <laughs> It's like a wee party in the middle of the pot, going on. Oh, they're, they are still separate, so... And then once they start floating to the top, I'll just scoop, scoop those ones out and then we can start frying them. I'm gonna stop because I feel like they're they're not really doing much at the moment. <laughs> it looks quite cool, doesn't it, Ethan? I just really enjoy watching them float to the top. 
There's something quite therapeutic about that. <laughs> and hope that these haven't stuck to the plate. No, we're okay. Look at them go. It was a small army of gnocchi. Yeah, and they were like conferring at the bottom of the pan, coming up with some kind of army plan. Right, so some of them are definitely not holding together quite as well as they could be. <laughs> so I think the trick is gonna be get them out of here as quickly as possible when they reach the top and then we'll fry them and that'll hopefully help them stick together a bit more as well. Three more, come on! Here we go! And how cute do they look? Wee gnocchis! Okay, next batch. I can possibly get all of the rest in. It might be a wee bit overcrowded, but... <laughs> can you tell I'm getting impatient and hungry now? <laughs> I hide it well. So yeah, I'm reckoning that because the recipe said to knead them, that's probably just to try and kind of keep them to stay together, I'm assuming. Because this is something we looked up, <laughs> that kneading with gluten-free stuff seems a wee bit pointless. Mainly because you normally you need to activate the gluten, but if you're not, if you're not got the gluten, you're not expecting there to be any gluten then why would you need it? But that was possibly just to also help mix the flour through. That, that, could, that could be a reason. Oh. Right, I think what I'm going to do now is, while we're waiting for the wee gnocchis to float, I'm going to add some spinach to the sauce. Probably just a handful. Because we don't want too much, but I do quite like some spinach in a sauce like that. Oh, they're so fast. <laughs> They've not given me any time to sort the spinach. Right, no, first of all, we're gonna get the gnocchi sorted. I thought I would have had more time than that. So yeah, so the first lot, my pot just obviously wasn't hot enough. It's looking much better now. And these seem to be sticking together better. Okay. There we go. And then we've got just a few more. Then, Honey, I'm not, now that we've got to this stage, I'm not entirely sure if baking the potatoes is really gonna have made that much difference. <laughs> because I suppose you're boiling them anyway. I mean, maybe if you like to bake them, instead of baking them in the oven, if you just put them in the microwave for like 10 minutes, that would probably speed up the process quite a bit. Um, yeah, I'm not sure it's gonna have made that much difference to the taste. But it was an experiment. And we've, we've tried it and we know now. <laughs> and that's always the thing with cooking. If you don't try, then you won't know. Yeah, I normally would microwave potatoes. It's just, I feel like I love potatoes, but life's too short 
to wait for a baked potato. <laughs> and when, especially when you can, just do it in the microwave. But yeah, that's true. If I had to do four in the microwave, that would take, what, 40 minutes probably. So yeah, it probably wouldn't have actually been that much quicker. It is convenient. And normally, like, I love a baked potato. And normally if I'm making one, I just get the, like, the frozen ones that are already baked that you just put in the microwave for five minutes. Just to, like, defrost it almost. Because I think they taste really nice as well. Plus, it, you've got a baked potato in five minutes. Right, let's get our last batch of wee gnocchi. Uh, soldiers. I can just, I would put money on it that by the time I go to put this in a pan they'll all be stuck together. <laughs> Maybe that's just the luck that we're having. Oh, that's hot. There we go. Are we all out? Yeah. Good. Okay. Let's get rid of that. And let's see, uh, where's my big pan? Big pan. And some oil. oil. And then I'm just gonna fry these off, mainly just to get a bit of colour. heat up. I am going to get a bit of spinach. So I've got about a handful and I have small hands so <laughs> maybe maybe a yeah a handful and a half I've got now. Just give that a quick wash and then I'm just going to wilt it through the sauce. just to, so I don't get water everywhere. There we go. How colourful does that look now? That's what you want from a pasta sauce. And then we'll just let that, I just love a tomato mascarpone sauce. I think it's probably my favourite of all pasta sauces. It's just so creamy and tasty. And it's so easy to make yourself. And I'm assuming you could probably make like a big batch and freeze it. So there's our sauce. And we'll just kind of wilt down with a wee bit of heat that's in the pan. That's, that's getting there. Let's see. Oh, they're so sticky. <laughs> okay. Look how cute they are. <laughs> Is it weird to find food cute? I don't think so. Maybe the oil. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. They're not too bad. If I kind of pick them all, then they're okay. A couple of them are definitely threatening to fall apart but they're not too bad but they are definitely it is that true or have I made it up in my head that I'm sure somebody told me that gnocchi actually means pillow is that right in Italian I can't remember where I heard that I thought that's really cute and it does seem quite suitable because they are like little pillows. I 
don't think I'm going to get them all in the one pan at one time. Or will I? Mm. I think I'll do, I'll do two lots. Maybe. <laughs> I'll do two lots. Maybe. don't think that's hot enough. Uh, see, I've gone through all of my wooden spoons again. Oh no, I found one. One sad little wooden spoon. <laughs> I go through wooden spoons at a ridiculous rate. Good. Thank you, Flex. But you're not supposed to be watching. <laughs> you're supposed to be resting your eyes and making yourself feel better. But thank you, I appreciate it. <laughs> right, yeah, these it needs to be a wee bit hotter. Oh no! Yeah, it needs to be hotter because we're sticking. Oh, thank you, Dina doll. Whoops. <laughs> yes, whoops. <laughs> Yeah, I think we'll get, I'm just going to do them all in a winner. So a couple of them are sticking, but I think that's because, oh, the pan wasn't hot enough when I put them in. So I'm hoping that it'll be better now. Yeah, I can't, that was the only thing I thought. I can't really imagine how this would be as a podcast when you can't actually see anything. <laughs> like, is it that interesting? <laughs> Plus, I was very aware that you were watching with headphones and I was like, I really don't want to make any noises that are too loud. <laughs> so I don't want to deafen you. They are moving. Okay, we're gonna do two batches because I could fit them all into the pan, but I don't want them all to stick and just to be a mess. So patience is everything. <laughs> Even though I don't feel like being patient at the moment. <laughs> that away I'll get my basil out so we're ready to plate up and I just think there's nothing better than fresh basil oh, the smell of it oh it's so good so yeah we're gonna top it with some of that why are you not doing anything? Oh, no, we're getting colour. We have colour. Can we see the colour? A wee knob of butter, yes. Thank you, Dana doll. A wee knob of butter is, that, is exactly what we need here. We're getting a bit of colour. Was that what you were going to say to them? With a wee, a wee knob. A wee knob of butter or three wee knobs of butter. Hey, come on now, you've got your butter. Let's, let's move it along. So the spinach is wilted into the sauce. So that's quite nice. I've got my trusty blue plate out ready to plate it. 
Yeah, we're getting a bit of colour now. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Can it individually turn gnocchi? Can I just use my hand? See, I could try and shake them in the pan, but I'm really concerned that after all this, that I'll shake it wrong and they'll all go flying. And I'll have no dinner. We're getting a bit of colour and a bit of crispiness. It's coming along. These better be good, by the way. <laughs> See, because some of them are sticking. Mm. That worked a wee bit, so... <laughs> Thought that was going to be quicker than trying to flip them all individually. They are quite fragile wee things, aren't they? You know, I could, I've just, they have taken on like a personal form me to in because I'm now just imagining them all as wee soldiers. Right. I don't even know how long I want to fry these for. Let me get a fork. Uh, I'm gonna try one. Because technically they are cooked already. Oh, well, that works much better than the spoon. Yeah, so technically they are cooked already. We're just getting a bit of flavour. Flavour, colour and... They <laughs> only make individuals now. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. That's what's happened. This is going to be really, really hot. Oh, really hot. That's delicious though. Mmm. Okay, it's worth it. It's a faff, but it's worth it. Mmm. They are really light and fluffy. All these little soldiers. I think it needs to be a bit hotter again because the colour is kind of, it's not really happening. It's not really happening. Do we add the rest to the pan? Yes. <laughs> I've got a bit of space now. Let's put the rest in the pan. Now that I've tried one, I'm like, oh, that's delicious. And do you know what it tastes like? It didn't taste like a, a tatty scone. <laughs> I suppose it is actually, that is a tatty scone, just in another form. I really enjoyed that you asked Irish Kate about that though. This was a really terrible idea because they're all going to cook at different times now, but it's done. <laughs> Just come across the couple that I made myself. Um, yeah, and they were too big. <laughs> they're much bigger than the rest. Right, we're all in. A tatty scone. Right, eat it and you can make them really easily. So it's basically just what I did here. <laughs> but instead of making them into little gnocchi balls, you want to make them into like in a flat triangles. But yeah, it's really, really easy. And they're so good. And then you want to put them on like a breakfast roll with, I like them best with sausages. 
and bacon and maybe a bit of black pudding. Yum. <laughs> now I'm getting really hungry. <laughs> <coughs> Yum. I'm, I am quite impressed by how they taste so far. Down a doll. I am. I just wish it was a wee bit fat. <laughs> but good things take time and all that. There's still any heat in that. Mm -hmm. mm, I think that could do with a bit more. I think there's a bit of water going into the sauce from the spinach. Oh, that's quite a lot. So I'm just going to add a bit more herbs and salt to liven up a wee bit. Oh, this is dangerous now. <laughs> it doesn't help that the pan's so heavy. <laughs> That's my main issue. Right, I'm going to tear up some basil. And then we can be ready to go once, once they're all cooked. Nice flip, thanks Adrian. <laughs> I never used to be able to do that. So when I was younger, my very first job, I got a job in a kitchen as a commie chef, kind of by accident, because I, went, I actually wanted a job as a waitress, but because I wasn't yet 18, they were like, oh, it's a bit tricky because you can't serve alcohol, but we're looking for someone in the kitchen. You want to try that out? And I was like, okay. <laughs> and at that point I didn't really cook. So I thought, yeah, we'll give that a bash. Um, but I was hopeless. Like, there was nothing that I could really do. And one of the things that they kept telling me to do was we sold, like, um, what were they called? Like, tossed greens. And I could not, for the life of me, do those that flip. So we ended up calling them sugared greens because I just kind of would go that and kind of shake them about a bit. <laughs> Oh, thank you very much for your raid, Purple Coffins. How are you doing? How was your, how did your lasagna garlic bread bowl go? I'm definitely going to check that out later. Thank you, Zibst. That's reminded me I was, I'd run out of water. I'm just topping up. Thank you, Zips. Much appreciated. <laughs> it went so well, yum. Good. I'm glad. Have you eaten it already? Or is that for, for dinner? Thank you, Funhouse. Nice to have you here. I hope you're well. Thank you very much for your follow. Thank you, Funhouse. I hope you're having a good Wednesday. I hope you enjoyed Purple Coffin stream. I'm, so ups I'm always so upset when I have to leave your stream, especially when I'm really late. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> Yeah, so for those who've just joined, um, I am another Scottish cooking streamer, um, fairly new. I, yes, yeah, so everything I make is gluten free. Most of it's vegetarian. I'm not vegetarian. I am gluten intolerant. I have IBS, so I have lots of different food intolerances and that kind of thing. Um, and try and kind of try and make food as inclusive as possible for people because I'm a bit obsessed. I'm like, I feel like food should be available and amazing for everybody. <laughs> I know. I think today I was in it like three minutes before I was supposed to start and I thought, I've not even set up things. <laughs> so I literally had to run down and get everything set up. I thought this is, this is not good. <laughs> Hello Sam, how are you today? Are you having a good Wednesday? Now we're trying to flip these but I've put them in at different times. Some of them are sticking, some are not. We've got a little bit there that's not loving life. That looks a bit better. So yeah, everything that we've made today has taken a really long time. <laughs> um, so the recipe that I got for this, so basically it's gluten-free gnocchi with um, tomato, mascarpone and spinach sauce. 
for sure off. No worry, Purple Coffin. Thank you very much again for the read. It's much appreciated. Our friends. Oh, nice. Well, good luck. I hope the move goes well. Yes, no problem. Well, it's, it's nearly there. It's not going to look that much different. <laughs> So teenage is such a long time, such a long time. <laughs> and for this one, I read in the recipe that if you bake the potatoes rather than boil them, then that lets less water in, so they're supposed to be a bit fluffier, so I thought I'll try it. The potatoes must have taken like an hour and a half to bake, so <laughs> it's really taking quite a long time. You made lasagna, nice. Did you make a veggie one, like purple coffins, or did you make a meat one? What do you use as flour? I just use a gluten-free plain flour mix. So I think the one I have, I don't know if I've still got a packet. Um, so this one, this is the, Turn it over. This is the self raising version, but it's just a Dove's free, Dove's Farm free from, and it's a mixture of rice, potato, rice flour, potato flour, tapioca flour, maize flour, and buckwheat flour. And I think it's, I mean, it's the easiest one for me to get hold of where I am. Um, and I think it pretty much pretty much works for everything. And I added a little bit of extra xanthan gum just to try and get it all. To hold together. Uh, oh! <laughs> One escaped! One made a run for it. I'm gonna eat that one. A meat one, nice. Have you had it already, Sam? Did it go well? I do love a gnocchi, uh, a gnocchi, a lasagna. I'm gonna put this up again because we're not, it's just not getting the colour on it that I want. And now they're all starting to stick together. Yeah, so I hope you all had fun in Purple Coffin stream. She always makes such amazing stuff. I think I got up to the... Um, what bit did I get up to? Chopping the bed. Mmm. So yeah, I was sad to leave because I really wanted to see how it turned out. Because it's a really cool idea. Very nice. Good. I am glad, Sam. There's nothing better when you make a dinner for yourself and it actually tastes really nice. <laughs> and there's nothing worse than when you make a dinner and it's rubbish. <laughs> right, I think we're getting a bit more. I'm just so impatient as well, I can't just let it sit. Okay, we're almost, we're almost there. So for serving it, what I'm gonna do is, it's literally just gonna be the gnocchi, some of the sauce on the top, and then I've chopped up some basil, just to sprinkle on the top as well. Um, this apparently is four portions almost. I made slightly less because I didn't have any more big potatoes. I would say that's two at a push. <laughs> And I mean, I like a big portion, but even still, it doesn't, there's not a lot of gnocchi. I mean, there may be quite big ones, but I wouldn't say that that's anywhere close to feeding four people. Especially not with the amount of food that I eat. Oh, we're getting there. There's more color. There is more color. I just need to be patient and stop playing about with. <laughs> That's always my problem. And I've just realized how dark it's getting outside. Hold on, is this gonna help the situation? Is that better? Yeah, I think that's better. This is, you can tell that it's becoming awesome. So it's almost dark at, oh, half past seven. It's later than I thought it was. <laughs> I'm just trying to distract myself from turning all the, from playing around with the gnocchi again. Has anyone in chat made gnocchi before? And if you have, 
did you also fry it? Or did you just boil it? I'm not a huge fan of just um, just boiled gnocchi. I feel that it's, it's just a bit, I don't really like the consistency. Better light, good. I was gonna say, all of a sudden it seems so, so dark. But that's good that it's better. <laughs> I'm allowed to flip it again, I'm going to flip it. <laughs> it's coming along. I think I could just pick out the ones that are done. <laughs> yeah, no, we're, I think we're nearly there. And they are, I don't, I mean, I don't know if it's got anything to do with the fact that it's baked potatoes rather than boiled potatoes but they are really, really light and fluffy. I wish I had a potato ricer. I mean, I could probably do it in my machine, but I feel like if I had a potato ricer, there are just a couple of little chunks of potato that it would be even nicer if they weren't there, like if I had managed to get them all out. Then at all, I have absolutely no idea. I think both of the cats are outside, hold on. <laughs> Found one. See if I can get it to come with me. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> He's not happy. Come on. Oh, hello. Nikki. See, she doesn't like this. She thinks because I've brought it up, she's like, I don't want to go to the vets. I don't want to go through the bits. He can't make me. Oh, and I can't even turn around. Are you okay? I'm not going to put you in the pot. Can you see her? She's a wee bit far away. <laughs> She's not happy. <laughs> oh, no, she didn't like that. <laughs> Come here. I can do it this way and then you can actually see her. I'll give it a treat or two. That'll maybe help. Like, there she, there she is. Can you see her? There she is. She's a wee pudding. Yeah, she's not, <laughs> she's not happy. She's just staring at the camera. No. <laughs> I hope that was okay, Dino doll. <laughs> normally they would, by this point, they would normally actually be around a bit more. But Murphy is outside enjoying himself. <laughs> We're all about the cats here. <laughs> that was good, thank you for that Dino doll because that's, that stopped me flipping and that's definitely made a big difference. <laughs> I love how everybody here is cat people. So yeah, the cat's not, well, she's half happy, she's half not happy because she got treats but she also got disturbed, so. <laughs> but she's fine. Right, I think I'm going to take some of these out and plate it up. Let's do that. <laughs> Aitorin, are you also a cat person? Tron is a cat person, we know Tron's a cat person. <laughs> Gotta love a good a good cat cam. Um, right, I'm gonna try. I think I'll use this to get it out because it's still even now it's falling apart. So let's use a fish slice. A fish is that a fish slice? That's not a fish slice. Is it just a slice? I've got you on the worst camera because you literally can't see anything I'm doing at the moment. <laughs> but 
would try and make it nice, but it's just what gone a bit messy. Oh, it's really, really hot. That's nice. So much. Oh, of course. I'm the same. I'm such a cat person. That's rotten that you've developed an allergy. Oh, that's so frustrating. Because you would think normally you would go the other way, like, and you would throw out all of it. Non clay litter. Well, at least you know how to how to kind of manage it. Plus, using your cat your cat litter tray is genius. I love that video. So I'm only putting the sauce on the like in the middle bit because I want some of them to stay um, to stay like crispy and then we'll put some sprinkle some basil over the top beautiful <laughs> and then do we want a little bit of what I got where's my Mm. Done. Should have thought about that earlier, but I've just thought, hmm, a little bit of parmesan might be quite nice on top. But now, obviously, the parmesan at the deep is in the deep depths of the fridge. Looks delicious. Thank you, Pinky. I appreciate that. Yum yum yum. What did I use to make the gnocchi? So the gnocchi I made with, um, so we baked three potatoes in the oven for what felt like about six hours. <laughs> it wasn't really that long. Um, we baked them in the oven for about an hour and a half probably. And then took them out, took the skins off, kind of scraped the, the meat, the potato out of the inside and um, mashed that all up with a fork added about a tablespoon of melted butter, uh, about a teaspoon of salt and half a cup of gluten-free plain flour. Just mixed it up and then I popped it in the fridge just to let it cool and then about 10 minutes later brought it out, rolled it out and then chopped it up, boiled it and then fried it. So it's, it's definitely a process. I feel like I look a bit grey now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. It does taste really nice. I'm just going to put this on for a second while I get a couple of pictures. Although the light's not great now for that anyway. Yeah, that's actually better this light. It's all about the photos. I'm going to, I'm just going to try one that's in here still rather than ruining my nice plating. Oh, and drop it entirely into the sauce. So they are quite hot, and the inside is a bit like lava. Mm -hmm. Really hot. <laughs> but yeah, that's really good. Yeah, if I do say so myself, that's, that's pretty good. Um, but I would definitely say fry them. I like gnocchi, but only really if it's been fried. I just feel like other gnocchi is a bit, just don't really like the texture. I feel like it's missing something. So yeah, I would recommend this. Um, so if you want to make any of this stuff, I have linked the recipes there. So there's one for the gnocchi itself and one for the sauce. The sauce, I didn't really follow the recipe. It's probably quite similar. Um, but I just kind of made like a simple tomato sauce and added some mascarpone um, and some spinach. So yeah, quite an, quite an easy dish. It just takes a bit of time. I agree. Yes, that's it. There's definitely, you can go really wrong with a gnocchi. Like it, it's not a, it doesn't feel like it's a difficult dish to do, but if you don't, if 
it's not right, it's not good. <laughs> so you want them like fluffy and I like them kind of, can you hear that? They've definitely got like a bit of bite to them. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So there we have it. Our gluten free gnocchi with tomato, mascarpone and spinach sauce. A little bit of basil and some parmesan on the top. So I hope you enjoyed. I'm going to go away and eat this because I'm absolutely starving. And this is the longest I've stood up in a long time. <laughs> so I'm going to go eat this. Chill out. Thank you very much for the raid, Purple Coffins. I think she's a wee helping move. But thank you very much anyway if you do watch this after. <laughs> thank you very much for all the followers. Thank you again, Tron, for your subs. Your gifted subs, you're far too good to me. Um, I am going, I think I just saw that Casey's on. Yeah, let's go and read Casey because Casey is probably my, one of my favourites, if not my favourite food streamer. If you haven't seen Casey before, he is it's Kitchen Confidence and he's all about getting people into the kitchen, um, trying to get them to experiment and everything he makes is delicious and he was making some iron burger dishes this week which obviously spoke to me being Scottish <laughs> so I'm gonna set up the raid please do stay and give him some love because he has deserved he does deserve it um, I do the wrong one every single time no worries Sam it was lovely to have you here thanks very much for stopping by again I hope you've enjoyed the rest of your lasagna and I hope you have a good rest of Wednesday. Kitchen confident. <laughs> right, I've set it up. So we're going to go and raid him in a wee minute. Please stay, go and say hello, give him a follow because he is brilliant. Um, and I will see you all again on Friday where I'm going to be making gluten-free gluten stuffed crust pizzas. So that should be good. So, are we ready to raid? It's just counting down. I always cut myself off at the wrong time here. So yes, thank you all very much for being here. Um, I'll see you all very soon and have a good Wednesday. Bye bye.